Here we go. I, am I good? I'm good. Cool. Cool beans. Okay. I on the count three, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. My name is Biendo. You may remember me from the Biendo stream from last week, or this week, or next week, if you're going back in time for some reason. Are you one of those people who clicks on view YouTube uploads by chronological date backwards? It works for some. Doesn't really work for me, so. Uh, anyway, today is the 6th of February, 2023. I hope you have had an amazing week uh, before you and the end of January. Uh, and uh, we'll have an amazing week ahead of you, but you're probably going to have a super amazing week because here am I sitting here going, hey, you know what I did? like ages ago, I played my favorite game of all time back in October, I think it was October 2010, ages ago. I played my favorite game on my channel, which was the good ol, how about let's just hop right into it. Alright, let's see if I can do this real quick. Oh no, where's the game? Oh, there it is. Phew. Whew. Okay. There we are, but... I love Metroid Prime. If I could marry a video game, it would be Metroid Prime. This is like... There, there is, I think, a point in every man's life... Nah, in everyone's life where there's a video game or a, a movie or a piece of music or a piece of art that just wows you. Metroid Prime is that to me. Metroid Prime is... Just like a game that made me realize how cool video games are. How amazingly, like, fleshed out, uh, rich and rewarding a game can really be. How it can teach you mechanics and teach you a world, teach you how to be a character. Well, maybe not necessarily be a character, but it teaches you how to play it in a way that makes me just so engrossed. Um, Coming out in 2002 on the GameCube, uh, this was, I actually didn't even play this at launch, I didn't even have a GameCube for a while, but I remember um, watching, and I, I've mentioned this a few times, uh, good old Greg Kasavin at GameSpot, he did a long 15 minute review about how really fantastic this game is, and Greg Kasavin is, I don't know, I think he's a designer at uh, Supergiant Games, who have made... Um, uh, oh my gosh, what's the name of the game they made before? My brain was about to say Braid. It's not Braid. He didn't, he didn't do Braid. Bastion. That's the one. And then, uh... Everyone knows Hades now. And, uh... Like, you know, they, they know their stuff. And... I don't know. I decided back to Greg Kasavin doing a review of this game. But anyway, let's hop into it. Now, first of all, before I go in... I ain't no fool. I don't need a hint system. Uh, but yeah. Uh, now some people who have played this game, actually played this game, I'm playing the European version. It's got a 60 hertz mode, so you probably can't tell the difference until you realize someone's talking over this intro cutscene. So, I shall let it speak for itself. The Cosmos. In the vast universe, the history of humanity is but a flash of light from a lone star. The life of a single person should be lost in space and time. But among the stars, there is one light that burns brighter than all others. The light of Samus Aran. Her battles extend beyond her life and etch themselves into history. Here, another chapter of that history will be written. Very ominous, and I don't even know why it's not even in the US version, but. Anyway, here she comes in. I love this just large backdrop. Giant spaceship, the big planet in the back. You got your cinematic bars on the top and bottom, but they actually, like, kind of shine gray to white. If there's something bright shining on screen. Also, Samus has no idea how to slow it. Slow a jet. Watch a jet. So she's a bounty hunter, not a pilot. Blame the Windows ME running on that. 
But I think what, uh, as someone who wasn't exactly a fan of Metroid before this game, I mean, I hadn't really played them, like, I think it never really dawned on me how, I guess, incredible waiting out for Metroid to appear in 3D after, uh, what is critically received as, uh, Super Metroid. Suddenly, Metroid disappeared. It never reappeared on the Nintendo 64. And there were talks of a Metroid game coming, but this is how they introduce it, with a giant wall with a bunch of red lights. This is a very gamey start uh, to the game, but uh, the, the big thing is that, yeah, you can lock on to, to things and go off that. You know? So I, I'll be playing this game at a decent pace. I'll try to squeeze it in three streams, because I think I can probably do it in three streams. Uh, but the way this game actually plays is, it's not quite a first-person shooter. It looks like it on the surface, but one thing that you'll notice immediately with the controls is that even though you can move forward and back with the left stick, you actually turn left and right. And the right stick, it makes hissing noises at you. It's not going to be used for a fair bit of the game. Um, so how do you look up? Well, if you hold down R, suddenly you are now looking around. Um, and uh, Samus will hold her hand on that. You press A to shoot. You press B to jump, you can press L to do this uh, lock-on. One day I will show you the, the mystical object that I'm looking at over there. Um, but the lock-on actually lets you strafe-ish, almost. Um, other than that, this game involves walking through a lot of rooms. Uh, also, I mentioned the scan visor, or I showed the scan visor. You press left, and now you can lock onto objects, and the airlock pressurizes all oh, this little, like, you know, little parasite air, and then they all just drop. So, there's something in kind of incredible about just, like, this presentation of everything's just, like, lit up to Samus here in, in front of her. Um, but there's also, like, a lot of cool things that you learn about the world, purely not by walking past, but by looking down and scanning at it. So here we can scan a new creature. This is a parasite, an interstellar vermin travel in swarms. Indigenous to Talon 4, a single parasite is harmless to larger life forms. However, they tend to travel in large groups, swarming over potential prey. Such swarms can be dangerous, and you can actually scan various pieces of more irrelevant data. But here's a space pirate whose death was caused by the severing of the spinal cord. And here is, uh, you know, something big, but it's radiation. It's got radiation. So, you can actually look at the mouth of it, where it's got incredibly large muscle structures surrounding the jaw area. Fluid sacs containing acid are also detected, so there's a lot of just cool bits of flavor text all over the place. Like, even like, you know, these are different pieces of biohazardous materials with batch numbers on them going to different decks. And there's an escape pod that's already been jettisoned, which, uh, it's like, here's a big tell as well, the fact that like, you know, there's already jettisoned escape pods all over the place, but not all of them have been jettisoned as well. And then you got another one here, you can blow them up and they blow up in your face there's a space pirate but he's got weak life science this guy's just leaking man yeah i love it so weak life science yeah he's still strong enough to try and shoot you back and he'll follow you around but you can pop him off in a bit he has a bit of health as well so but yeah i just love how just like in one room in one room we just learned so much more we learned that like some of the whole of uh, these escape pods have been used as a giant radioactive, ra radioactive, just radiating thing that's fallen from this part of the room. These little parasites come out and eating them. There's a guy who's been crushed by debris. You can even scan him and, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Excessive one trauma to the cranium, yeah. And uh, you can even scan just like this. Look, like it can be easily removed. So, there's some things, if you hold down A, you do this wonderful charge beam. And it breaks some things, but it's also a really strong attack, so. These little dudes crawling in here. So this teaches you about another mechanic. If you hit X, Samus turns into a little ball known as the Morph Ball. A uh, classic Metroid staple, but it lets you crawl into small corridors, which, uh, as a real interesting note, I guess, people worried about turning Metroid into a first-person game, but, you know have a third-person camera for the morph wall. It makes sense, and it actually works out really nicely. This is the map station. It lets you view the map of the area. Again, another Metroid staple, although uh, unlike other Metroids, uh, you actually get a proper 
or at least older Metroids, you get a proper 3D map of the area uh, with basically wireframes of the, you know, the mesh of the whole place. One thing I love about this is that it's using an uh, isometric, isometric, that's the term, orthographic perspective. And that means that uh, lines further away, or rather lines that are parallel in real life stay parallel. And that's kind of cool, but sometimes it gets a little confusing. Like sometimes your brain like doesn't realize that you're going up or down. You'll find out on a later, um, <laughs> later room. But uh, yeah, we can scan some of these, and this actually gives uh, you know logs about Talon 4's crater area, the f the frigate exterior hull stable and fully functional. Like yeah, okay. Two parasite queen specimens have become volatile on deck beta. All security personnel should report to the biotech research area. Oh my gosh, parasitic infestation has been detected in the ventilation systems of Dex, Gamma, and Beta. So, I don't know if I'll see every single log, but I will try my best to get all the ones that record in the actual game's files, because that is a proper 100% to try and look for. Um, and yeah, you get to scan a lot of panels that will lead you to triggering switches or lifts or other kinds of stuff. But yeah, I can gush about this game so much. I. I just love this game so much. I think it's just to do with a combination of the presentation, the uh, challenge, the exploration, and uh, honestly how smooth it all becomes in its, uh, in its second half. So here we got more Dead Space Pirates because we're not really pacing by stop all the time. Um, now you gotta watch out because around this corner a little turret you can actually scan them as well as a new creature the auto defense turret use missiles to break the outer casing you just fire a missile it just blows up you can even get a little uh, missile recharge pack this gives you three rounds uh so yeah so there'll be some logs where it's like you know mutil mu mutation initiated so they're trying to create these uh weird mutated beings that may or may not exist. Infusing Phazon. Gets larger and larger. And in fact, actually, we've got a bit of lore right here. Zebes has fallen. All ground personnel are presumed dead, either killed by the hunter clad in metal or in the subsequent destruction of the underground facilities. Our research frigates Orphean, Syriacus, and Volparagom were in orbit at zero hour and managed to retreat. Frigate Orphean is now docked at Vortex Outposts. Orphean's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. Metroids are healthy, but on restricted feeding schedules due to uncertain supply status. We're ready to begin research on the Metroids and other promising life forms. Security status remains at Code Blue. No signs of pursuit from the Hunter. This one bit of log, like I guess, yeah, it's exposition. I guess technically it's the game kind of telling you it in text, but it's writing from the perspective of the space pirates. Kind of already just saying, hey, yeah, this happens right after Super Metroid. Zeebs fell, they've still got some Metroids, and Samus is chased after them. Like, that's kind of cool. I love, like, this door as well. It keeps kind of, like, pushing off. Xenotropic life form unstable. Oh, okay. Fortunately, we'll never see the light of him. But, uh, again, more logs all over the place. actually use your missiles as well because this guy's mostly fine uh you might actually see me doing this strat as well where every time you shoot a missile uh i might demonstrate this right now your beam kind of does that and you can hear the sound of me trying to mash the missile button again but if you shoot a missile and then you shoot you know you press a again it actually kind of closes the thing and lets you shoot another missile quicker it's a fun tech strat a lot of people I know just don't use the missiles, actually. Like, you'll use them when you have to. You don't use them all the time. So, this goes to the Gamma Deck. Down we go, where we got a wonderful lift. Get used to seeing lifts, although maybe not quite like this one. Um, or elevators, sorry. Sorry. So you can even scan these guys, although... Oh, come on. These guys' logs don't quite appear in the, uh, the thing. It's just, it's got, a uh, maximum firepower. Okay. I 
ones, very dead ones. And, uh, still very dead. You got this as well, there's little slots that let you fit a spherical shape into the clamp. How convenient that they've actually made slots that fit exactly the morph wall. And they've also got a room with uh, two turrets. How nice of them. I'm just going to scan this right now. And, oh yeah, you can also use the charge beam to pull in power-ups. Which is kind of cool, so... Anyway, headed into this room, and we have visited the first save station. Seven of the stations and save the game. So... Just like Super Metroid, save stations exist to... Did they heal you in Super Metroid? I don't know, it's been like forever since I played Super Metroid. Um... Oh yeah, they heal you in this game. They don't recover missiles, so... Not that, but... Oh boy, I could just gush about this game. I can just go, oh, so delish. Uh, but I love how, you know, how on this as well, just like corridors filled with dead space pirates. In fact, actually, do they even describe how they died? Large amounts of blood missing may have been used for nourishment. Ooh. So, we wander into this room. I will gush about the graphics for a bit. I know it's maybe a little bit dated in the sense of model quality, the render resolution. But I feel like there's something quite stylistic about, uh, you know, strong color palettes and, uh, particularly a lot of shiny objects and a lot of, like, different kinds of shadery kinds of goodness. Like this force field pops right out at you. So this is the Parasite Queen. Let's get a good long scan to figure out what we're up against. Parasite Queen, a parasite female. Genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in this creature's mouth. Use your auto-targeting to acquire this new target. Scans indicate the presence of a potent mutagen. Origins unknown. The creature exhibits the ability to fire weapon-grade blasts of energy from its mouth, a trait not present in the sand and parasite genome. It appears the pirates have begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. So, how do you beat it? Well, just spam it with a few missiles. at you a bit, but it's not like you're going to need this for anything else. You could have also used the charge beam, and you could have mashed A. I'm feeling like I don't want to mash A right now. He, 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 he fires some beams, you gotta dodge him a bit, you gotta work around the force field, but... And it's not a Metroid game unless you got a runaway sequence, so... The reactor core is suddenly critical, because I guess he fell into it. We gotta jump up some ledges. Scan some platforms and get out of here. Plenty of time, seven minutes is plenty of time. I think the world record I've seen is like four and a half minutes left. Still though, you know, you can always do a good thing. If you paid attention, you'd scan this. It actually disabled that turret that hangs out just in the south code. He's just chilling. There's some enemies that are shooting this thing. Parasite trying to get out of here. One thing I actually love is that this is like an earlier room, so there's like signs on the wall of like transferring specimens to different batches. They're dying. But instead of uh, going out the door, we're going out this little escape hatch, which connects to these uh, wonderful tunnels. These tunnels are wonderful because you're going to notice there's just loads of parasites leaking out, crawling over the ceiling, crawling over the walls. It's a kind of fun, impressive amount of little little dudes, and especially for a game that runs at 60 hertz, um, progressive, I believe. Is this progressive? Yeah, it is progressive. Or it could be a high sign. Pretty sure the sequel's progressive. It runs super solid, although uh, definitely he pulls pulls the grunt out of an emulator if you're playing it on that. So, and yeah, even even the PAL version has a 60 hertz option, so would recommend that if you're trying that. And I love how just a long walk and we're back in that one room with the uh, the elevator lift. Like I, I I was still gush about just like you know cohesive level design, trying to go like hey you know you're not just going through a random series of rooms, even though, yeah, it does look like a snaky kind of corridor. Uh, you know, I so we're going old-fashioned with that one, charge shot. 
I love these steam events. Provide some steam on the visor. I do not know how well any of this is picking up. Uh, based on Twitch streaming or uh, YouTube re-uploading. But I hope it looks good. And I hope it looks way better than my old uploads. 240p, man. I think I've actually got like 25 times the number of pixels. Whoa. Yeah. This won't crush you, but it definitely... Oh, maybe it does crush you on the other side. But it does push kind of hard, so you gotta... One to pass it. You're gonna hear it fire behind you. It's a wonderful sound. I love it. I lo I, I'll just keep gushing. You know? But just to stop gushing... Obviously, we've got to have a villain in the game. So, Samus enters this room. I guess it's a big open room. But it's got a ceiling. And who could it be? None other than Ridley. Villain from the previous Metroid game. I guess me as someone who hadn't played other Metroids. I just thought, oh, it's a big, weird dragon thing. And he's definitely thinking on this, so I know I'll be fighting him later. What does he exactly do here? I'm not too sure. Like, he breaks some of this stuff? Is he responsible for any of this? This is the grapple hook, you just kind of point it and press L, you kind of do your business. There's actually some fun logs over here as well. In fact, these tell you exactly what's going on. He's been uh, given all the tech updates, you know? Exoskeleton, umbilical retraction? I assume that's like a metallic thing. So, I assume he broke out of this room rather than like him just taunting you in particular. electricity in the way and uh like all good metroid games why can't metroid crawl well scan this and suddenly there's a large explosion knocking samus back into the lift and uh electrocuting a suit resorting to basic functionalities Basically, we lost everything. Anyway, crawl through a little, little tight vent, and uh, a little bit of fire in that direction, so we'll go out this way. And this is the uh, the one room with the, the pressure. Which actually, I think, does this put out the fire when the room depressurizes? No! Okay, game. You, lose, you lost one for me. Although, it did close off the room that I went from, so I got that at least. Anyway, one last charge out if you were running out of time. Hope you didn't run out of time now. Samus flees the spaceship, which is exploding a lot. There's space pirates flying in every direction. Along with this general debris. I guess the exoskeleton lets Ridley go in space. Listen, that'd be kind of cool. It's like having a little space in so. Anyway, Samus takes, takes chase. We have uh, completed the prologue of the game. So tracking the enemy has been lost. The ground-based recon required. Begin landing sequence. So, uh... If there's one thing I guess you might say this game follows Super Metroid a bit too closely. Most of the items are just straight from Super Metroid. We start off with a space-based sequence and then land on the planet nearby. Here we have lovely grassy grounds. Talon Overworld. Something nice about the way this game's presented as well. Just you just soak in the environment. You're just you know, what am I looking at? These strange plants. This weather. The rain bouncing off Samus already. And yeah, you can actually like see the I mean if you're looking closely, you can see the rain bouncing off. Uh, Samus's arm came in there, and in fact, I'm not too sure if you can see it off... Probably can't see it on the ground. But I just love the way that, like, then you look up and you get rain splattering on the seat, on your visor. Trees. You know, everything around this is just, oh, I gush, it's pretty. So, and here we are, the, uh, overworld of the, the Talon overworld, if you will. There's actually a, uh, a map as well. 
a new map that we're looking at. Uh, but first of all, let's look at, you know, this is the Hunter Class gunship, registered to Samus Aaron. You can return to your ship to recharge energy, reload weapons, and save progress in the game. So this is an all-in-one save and ammo recharge, just like it always is. Uh, there's a few paths to go, but I'm going to take kind of the optimized route. Uh, you're going to hit dead ends and kind of find out what you're missing if you go in certain directions. And I feel like for a Let's Play, it's probably going to you know, steal a bit too much time. But look at these dudes. These little beetles, they're burrowing insects with a resilient carapace. Carapace? Capace. I don't know. I've never seen this word outside of this context. Extremely aggressive. Insect's massive mouth enables it to tunnel through solid rock at high speeds. Above ground, beetles can cover short distances rapidly. They attack anything that moves near their lair, which is why they're ultra defensive. They take a few shots, but they're all good. Uh, I, I love how instinctively I try charging. I was like, oh yeah, you don't get that. There's a few other enemies set, sitting here as well. You might notice this. This is a sap sack. Chemical reaction within sack produces violent explosion when agitated. Because of its irresistible odor, without a U, and sweet nectar, the sap sack was nearly eaten out of existence. The evolution of an explosive chemical sack saved it, and only brave or ingenious creatures dared to devour it. And uh, explosive is correct. Wonderful. We got these enemies up here, they're just chilling. These are uh, uh, Zoomers, they are people who are born after 1997. They anchor themselves to walls and other surfaces, avoid contact with spikes. The basic nerve center located directly above the Zoomer's mandibles detects nutrients. Sharp spines protect it from casual predators. The lack of a reinforced car... There it is again, carapace? Carap makes the Zoomer vulnerable to any indirect attacks. There's also another one up here. This one's a bit redder. This is a Gima. A wall-crawling mollusk with retractable spikes. The Gima is an evolutionary offshoot of the Zoomer family. When threatened, it extends lethal spikes and retracts its head deep into its armor. There it is again! I swear. It's just like pointing out like the, the stone surface this light and grows on appears too smooth to be natural. That's kind of fun. And there's actually a lot of like fun little like bits of lines here about uh, how this blast caps here? I wrote that blast caps later. Volatile chemicals within this weed's toxic fungal cap may explode if agitated. The poisonous flesh of the blast cap helps keep it from being eaten. It also detonates its fungal cap when it senses even slight contact. Everyone likes exploding mushrooms. So there's something kind of, you know, s surreal about how everything in this game starts right now. We've got spiky, spiky things, you know, uh, Little beetles that come out and you know, defend their, their their homes and but it's all presented to you and it's kind of just like it's there and you can scan it and get information about it or you can just kind of wander past it but it's all trying to uncover the world and uncover where you are because not only you know we have these space rides now we have these ruins the Chozo ruins if you will who are the Chozo? Well, this was a mystery to me, but you can read some lore of theirs. The history of the Chozo stretches back into ancient times, so far into the fog of the past that we know, we know not where our ancestors came from. One thing is clear, however, the Chozo who colonized Talon 4 made a conscious choice to eschew a civilization of advanced technology. They, choose to live, or they chose to live in harmony with nature, guided by the providence of the universe. As the city grows, we plan to honor them with written tributes, carvings etched in stone to remind us always of their legacy. That's kind of fun how it's like, you know, moment one, there's a bit of lore reason why you're going to see writings of all these things. And on top of that, there's a writing pillars. So let's have a, a wide angle shot, just introducing this large main plaza of the, the Chozo ruins. Unlike the Talon Overworld with its lush greenery, this is a uh, basically a crumbling, falling apart kind of bit of ruins. Not to say it's still not functional, but it's definitely you know you wouldn't you wouldn't live here, you wouldn't sleep here. Let's jump up some steps and head through this low door over here. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure you're gonna get fun stuff like uh, what's going on here. These stones have fallen from the walkway above. That's kind of fun, just a bit of level design, a bit of, bit of fun maps. Uh, we got some new enemies chilling right here. These are not the parasites. 
though they look like they're acting the same. These are scarabs. They're exploding parasites that can embed their bodies in solid rock. Scarabs think nothing of sacrificing themselves for the safety of their swarm. When a hostile life form is sighted, they block its progress by embedding themselves in floors and walls. Embedded scarabs violently self-destruct when threatened. And that's right, you walk through these, the day is ruined. I mean, you can walk through some of them, that's gonna happen, but... We've also got these fun enemies. These are ions, immobile organisms, or organisms entirely composed of ocular tissue. Capable of launching sustained energy beams when active, the ion is sensitive to light and will close shut if a bright flash ignites nearby. I'm shooting it. They're good fun. You can still kind of matrix dodge all their lasers, or you can take lots of damage like I just did. Oh, that more lore. That's probably more lore at the beginning of the game than after. Uh, Chozo script translated, many long years have passed since we Chozo first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of the ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with visions of past and future. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known to us. You can actually find out uh, there's poison in this tree because if you look up, there's a war wasp hive. Primary war wasp dwelling, only vulnerable to heavy weaponry. And the war wasp built their homes over existing crevices using whatever materials are close at hand. They're carrying building fragments back to the construction site with their forelegs and glue them into place with adhesive secreted from their abdomens. Secretions. Probably watch out a little bit. Someone's gonna get very angry that I'm on low health. But I'm trying to scan the war wasp. So this is the actual war wasp because I've uh, you know, kicked the wasp nest, so to speak. Airborne insects are equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. The war wasp rarely strays far from its hive unless it is pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival. Dive bombing its enemy with stinger extended. Fast working toxins from the stinger can incapacitate most small organisms. So I'm gonna now do a quick cut over here. Because there's another save over here. Don't have to scan every save, but it's good to heal. It's good to have a bit of a refresh point. Okay, and they like hogging the door if you if you let them. So you can't do anything about the hives just yet. A few of these guys pop out. I'm not too sure if there's like yeah, there's like fun you know stuff about these. Uh, Sculptures crafted after like stars. A lot of cool stuff, to say that. Uh, I already looked at the blast caps, but there's actually this uh, little tangleweed, is what it's referred to, I think, as. Yeah, plant life with basic sentience retracts into the ground if threatened. Tangleweeds are only dangerous to small organisms. They're covered in tiny barbs designed to trap potential meals. Tangleweeds lack the strength to do anything more than hinder large life forms. So, yeah, you can walk into it, it just kind of slows you down. So the next room we have these glowing little enemies. Uh, these are plasmites, small insect capable of storing and releasing thermal energy. Plasmites are attracted to sources of heat, thriving on the energy present there. They emit light when hunting and will expel small bursts of thermal energy when threatened. And that's right, they blow up and they actually make the room a bit more quickly darker than you're expecting. There's also a fun box here, which uh, if you're missing some health, it actually drops a, uh, a red health, which replenishes 20, which doesn't seem like too much, and yeah, it's not really that much, but it's something, so. Anyway, if you're tired of me reading out stuff, well, you're probably going to be tired of uh, this right here. Walk forward and, ooh, look at that, it's a glowy, but uh, it's for some odd reason reacting to you as a person. I assume the Chozo built this as a, uh, well, as a... A trial, I guess. So scan this, and we have the Hive Mecha security unit program to work with predatory hive. Well, that grading sound is still going. The design for it makes the shielding of hi uh, on Hive Mecha weak around their access ports. These units are second-generation combat drones, able to interface with organic units at a higher level. They train, shelter, and work with hive dwelling predators. And on, they rely on their uh, their hive beasts to handle any threats. Yeah, we can scan these. A ram war wasp, an airborne predator, circles its prey and then strikes. War wasps are the only species in Talon 4 to evolve a true hive mind. Nesting in damp, dark places, ram war wasps emerge in small groups. 
threaten and circle their enemy at high speeds, disorienting it, striking from all sides as a single intelligence that can fell huge organisms. And yeah, there's these little like openings that they come out of where there's high amounts of toxins. So. Anyway, this is the uh, second boss of the game, the War Wasp Hive. Uh, the way to fight it is you just gotta make sure you take out these guys as soon as you can, and once all of them are gone, checking the right on the top left, you shoot the little opening. You can actually get some like free pot shots on some of these if you're mashing the A button hard enough, but it's it's not quite the easiest to get all of them like that. Also make sure you don't just wander off the platform. I love how you notice while I'm mashing A a bunch. Uh the um the end of Samus's uh you know uh arm cannon also like starts to kind of steam up. Especially if you're shooting super fast. Like oh okay. I should have locked on first. go. Like all good bosses, they come in uh, packs of three, basically. And don't get disoriented, some are still, you know, running around while others are stopped and trying to line up a shot. This is a good boss to teach you about your radar and getting you to really, like, you know, rely on it, because uh, it's a useful tool and something that uh, kind of... I don't know, it's like, it's a little bit of a design crutch, but it's also like, it makes sense. Because the game's in 3D, unlike other, you know, kinds of games, really. You don't know what's around you, and it's not the most fun taking hits from things that you couldn't see. But here, you can see, and what we can see right now is... ...a wonderful item. Walk forward to pick it up. And Samus has to do a bit of a glowy, because... ...it gotta make you feel good. Look at this wonderful thing you picked up. This is the missiles! The one thing that was broken earlier, we've got a working version again, so they teach you about the missiles. You can use missiles to destroy doors like this. Which is a blast shield. So, yeah, you can... I'm vulnerable to beam weapons. I love how it bounces off in whatever direction. I'm gonna completely ignore this door. Some people are gonna yell at me for doing that. Don't worry, I got this, man. I'll, I'll, I'll come back here this stream, don't worry. This is not going away forever, so... Uh... And now I just wander back. But, uh, there's some nice goodies to get on the way back, and this is actually one thing I love about the game, is that there's sometimes a little bit of forced backtracking, but there's also, like, kind of cool things, like, you can use the missiles to actually blow up the war wasp pipe there. You don't really get anything out of doing, you know, blowing them up. Oh my gosh, there's war wasps, war wasp hives. But you might actually spot stuff like this. We're down here, where there's a stress point present in Brimstone Wall. A concussive blast may shatter it. That is your key word right there. They even highlight Brimstone in red. If you're scanning objects, there's a fun trend this game has where it'll, you know, tell you the material of the, uh, the surface that you're trying to scan and go, hmm, if it's made out of this, you can use a missile to break it. And, uh, here's a little map station. Just, just another one. Why not? So now I think there's like six areas total. The world map doesn't really give you a key look over because you don't have all the areas, but uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, the Chozo Ruins, it goes on for a bit. It definitely goes on for a fair bit. So we'll be exploring most of this this stream, actually. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, keeping your eyes peeled when you backtrack is definitely a fun part about this game. And just like, you know, what kinds of items do you have now, and what's something that you've noticed, like, uh... It's just, like, fun things that, like, I don't even know what they are. Let's keep backtracking, I know someone's gonna, again, yell at me. Not only did you miss the, uh... You know, the health earlier, you also missed the, uh, save point right there. I got this, bro, I got this. Oh boy, I... Pfft, I decided to really cop it. Get a lot of goodies off some of these guys. Um, but the key thing is, yeah, I walked past this door on the way up. Uh, and that's because it's a missile door. In fact, we've got a little sign here telling us this is the passageway to the shrine. I'm gonna work my way in. Let's be a little careful because these guys are totally gonna ruin my day if I let them. There we go. Gosh, there's so many of them, man. 
so many. I love how I, every time the, the annoying freezes in my mind, I just hear my disc like kind of flip out for a moment. So, uh, so anyway, look at this. It's the morph ball, but nope. You gotta have another challenge. We got lots of beetles. I'm gonna now try and clear them out as quickly as possible by mashing the A button. I hope you don't mind me mashing the A button. That's gonna be a trend of this this game, basically mashing the A button constantly. Sometimes taking hits and Samus's gun goes wild. Anyway, a rumble in the volcano. We have a uh, swan. A load of the nest so hard, they have uh, given us a new variant. This one, anyway. So, this is uh, the plated beetle. The plated beetle charges at you like it's a bull. In fact, Let's read the description of it. Well-armored, burrowing insect, vulnerable only in the rear abdomen. The creature's thick cranial plating can repel frontal attacks. This gives it an advantage in combat, allowing it to make ramming attacks. Only surfacing when it detects vibrations above, it then maneuvers itself so as to always face its rival, keeping its exposed abdomen, abdomen protected. So, what you gotta do is just let this guy go up to you, have him do a dash, and then missile, missile, beat him. That was, it. That was a great boss. So I mean, people sleep on the missiles, including me, maybe ages ago. Jump up and claim the prize. I'm pretty sure it's been like five minutes since I picked up the missiles as well. And this is the morph ball. We had this earlier. You just press X. Uh, you don't have all the abilities, so you don't have the bombs, which we. I don't think I used them earlier. Yeah. So with that, now where do we go? Well, there's another uh, corridor, um, which uh, you'll figure out like what you have and what you don't have. Um, you're actually able to, that, that missile door I skipped earlier, you're able to continue because there's a morph ball kind of hole behind it, but uh, bear, keep, keep in mind there's still, you know, stuff you'll need. So. I love going over here and you got these war wasps just kind of chilling out, but I also love how there's some birds in the sky and I always love trying to pop off a couple of the birds. I don't know, it's very entertaining for me. I love doing it. So if you ever came up here, which you could go into this corridor immediately, where you'd be greeted by, you know, the branches block most of the tunnel, but there's a small opening with the floor. Just to imply that, yeah, there's something to it, so... Ride your morphle. I love the shadows. I love how bright it is on the inside. But, like, how dim the room actually is. Um, we've got a bit of lore on the, the far wall as well. Oop, there it is. Uh, so, our sanctuary grows by the day. We chose Ode no much of technology, but we do not know... Sorry, we do not worship it. Our home here on Talonfall will be a place of simplicity. Structures honed from the stone, bridges woven with branches, hallways caressed by pure waters. We build around the ancient and noble trees, drawing from their strength and giving them our own in return. All that is wild will flow around us here. Our race will be just one more group of creatures in the knit of nature. It's our hope that such a state will bring with it great wisdom and a greater understanding of the nature of the universe. Which is a very cool thing. Also, sup, Pony Helix? I missed your message ages ago. I'm sorry, man. I just, I just see a sup in the chat and I go, no, I missed it. Found and choked by overgrowth. Toxin levels are higher. Yes. There is toxin in the world. There's also uh, weird things here. I love a room like this, though, because uh, there's all these creatures around, and if you destroy all of them, it's just like, yeah. That's all the light in the room. It's super dark now. Maybe on a CRT, this room became actually impossible to see. Pretty sure there's everyone's favorite enemy, the uh, Shriek Bats as well. Territorial ceiling dweller. Body temperature peaks at 121 degrees centigrade. Shriek Bats have high internal temperature, making them easy to spot with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings while hunting for small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb anything that wanders near. There are a lot of dive bombing enemies. So, they always catch out people. I love as well if you really like peek over, you get like this wonderful like citadel kind of vibe up there. But you can't go up there, don't worry. Uh, 
And we got uh, some more fun swinging enemies here. These are the Reaper Vines, powerful rock dwelling tentacle. A single eye upon the Reaper Vine keeps a constant vigil, but its vision is limited to 10 meters. A scythe like appendage on its tip is home to lethal sharpness. The Reaper Vine will swing this blade wildly at anything that enters its zone of perception, which is good fun. Get one for the house, you know. Anyway, I'm just gonna wander around the room again. You might, you might accidentally go up to the top of the room and then be a little disappointed. Um, once you get to the top, because, uh, yeah. Lovely steamy corridor. Everyone likes a steamy corridor. And here we have on the right here... Another door. I keep, I keep knocking off all the doors. If there's one thing, I guess, if you go in a bit fast, you'll definitely feel where the disc is trying to load rooms, but I love the idea that, like, ever since I started the game, you know, like, we've really kind of been watching Samus the whole time. Maybe a little bit of this after the kind of intro prologue bit, but I think there's a big, uh, let's see. A bit there. Let's see more. These are some more blast caps. You can't walk in there, poop. It's okay. But, uh, yep, keep your, keep your ears peeled, you'll hear stuff like this, you'll potentially not even see... I'm pretty sure there's no... Oh, there you go. Truth awaits you in a sacred hall. What a wonderful thing to say. But, yep, keep your eyes peeled. There's another, another missile. Just right there. How cool is that? Now this... Oh, right the corner, sir. This next room has uh, a bit of a puzzle going on. You gotta keep your eyes peeled yet again. There's these runic symbols, and you activate them by looking at them. There's actually uh, some toxic water trees all over the place. But hop up here, shoot these glass caps a bit, and you should be able to scan this after you get them. So uh, there's four symbols in this room. Um, let's watch it out a little bit. Up here, and there's one down below, right here. Get this one guy, and here we are. The last one up on the top wall here. Which flips the thing around, and you can scan this one, and uh, the gate has been unlocked. So, that's cool. There's actually a bit more on the reverse wall as well. Unforeseen by sages, a meteor came as if from nowhere, casting a dark shadow of debris over the land with the violence of its impact. Its destructive force spent, the fallen star burned itself out rapidly, and the incident should have faded into memory, but the meteor brought with it a corruption. A great poison burst forth into the land, a strange energy that clawed at natural life with a ferocity that seemed almost sentient. Bound by our ignorance of this phenomenon, we chose though could only watch in horror as this dark force slowly began to spread across the surface of Talon 4. So, oh, okay. Bit, bit on this. But what is this here? That's right, we gotta keep getting all the all the goodies we had. Uh, uh, 30 minutes ago. The charge beam. Hold down A and you can charge and release fire. Definitely useful for some things and uh, occasional big blockers to the game. But uh, a couple of eye things. But sometimes it's really bad to jump past, but I did okay, so... And now we wander back a bit. But yeah, no, I will keep gushing about this game. I'm just gonna... Uh, just gonna have six hours of gushing. That's this whole series of streams, basically, but... Oh boy, nah. I, I love this game, and I actually find, like... Maybe there's a bit of a cardinal sin for me to not even play any of the sequels on... On uh, my channel ages ago. But... You know, I feel like it's it's good to have a favorite game and like why do you love it what are the things that you're really looking out for so for me it's like i just love you know parts of the presentation i love how like oh look at that like here's something new i, I just found out like these missile launcher rounds with five ammo uh like how is this room laid out like your eyes you're just seeing okay well there's four doors we've gone into three of them there's one up the top this is your brain now going, okay, let's problem solve. Let's figure out what parts of the room we can climb up. What parts of the room can I explore with my newfound uh, charge beam? To be honest, uh, I'm trying to think. 
Where does the charge room actually come in? We'll find out for it. I'm just gonna casually push myself up to this wall. It's a bit perilous, the platforming, but it kinda does the job. Lots more shriek bats, lots of them. And a fun kinda dynamo y room. Ruined hallways. These hallways that are just literally like a way to kinda load in the next kind of room. But I think the rooms are fairly detailed, especially for like what you're actually looking at. There's a lot to, to pack, unpack in this room, and actually if you keep your eyes peeled, you can actually scan over there the entry for a locked door, so you won't have to worry about uh, finding that later. That is just a flat out locked door, there's, like, there's no getting around that one, the game does not want you to open that up. But uh, here's a fun little enemy. This is a uh, stone toad. Preys on creatures smaller than itself. Vulnerable only from within. A stone toad is able to remain still for days. It preys upon creatures smaller than itself, inhaling them whole. Anything it finds undigestible, it regurgitates. Stone toads use their tusks as a last resort in combat. Huh. Anyway, crawl up into a ball. And uh, away we go, down some... some oh, down some corridors. <laughs> there we go. Introduce uh, boss number three. I think we're up to no, we're up to four now. Sorry. This is the uh, the incinerator drone, programmed for high temperature waste disposal. Device schematics indicate a high risk of malfunction when internal power core is damaged. The unit has minimal combat programming, but can defend itself if necessary. This drone's intense heat blasts compensate for its lack of battle prowess. Yes, it's just the thing that lights the whole room on fire. If you throw anything in this room, it's probably going to melt. Unless it can wander around the fire. Shoot its little red thing, and it uh, ignites this nest, which uh, you might notice has agitated these uh, barbed war wasps. Airborne insect with the ability to launch its stinger at its prey. A highly aggressive member of the war wasp family, this insect can propel the tip of its stinger up to 20 meters. The stinger tips regrow seconds after launch and contain an acidic compound designed to pre-digest prey. Very spooky stuff. And these guys are just going to keep coming out of that. Meanwhile, uh, it kind of tipped the, the machine, so you got to sometimes jump over, sometimes duck under one of the bars. But this gets you really thinking about strafing around objects and really maintaining your space because you got to keep looking up. Looking for all these war wasps while also keeping your eye out, like, do I jump, do I duck? Keep an eye out for this when it pops up. Let it keep flaming the nest. These, these war wasps keep coming out, I tell ya. There we go, enough hits and uh, the whole thing catches fire. Because why not? Why not catch fire, you know? And also blow up. <laughs> sure. And would you look at this? It's the same animation. It does a little, little bounce at the end. This is the Morph Ball Bomb. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think I used the bomb earlier. I think it was available. I just don't think there was anything to do with it. So while you're in the Morph Ball mode, you can press A. If you keep your eyes peeled over here, you can actually find this little hole over here. But you can go down, and look at this. It's another missile. It's not more Morphle Bombs, unfortunately. You only get the four, the uh, three. But they keep recharging every time you use them. Just like regular Metroid. Actually, you used to have, like, you used to be able to charge up. And then go into Morphle form to drop, like, five at a time. They don't let you do that anymore, unfortunately. And you also can't do infinite bomb jumping. They've, they've timed it well. So you can't get that done, but uh, yeah, you can use them to bounce up and that will actually be a nice kind of game design thing to get you back up into Legends, although it didn't give you much time with the Morph Ball without it, so still, it's kind of cool. Anyway, a little bit of backtracking. Uh, also, this is a bit fun and I love how this room kind of shows you something cool. This is uh, Sandstone. Sandstone, unlike uh, Benzium, can be broken with the Morph Ball Bomb. 
and you can use that to get to the other side of this room without actually doing anything in this room. Which is kind of cool. And that's one thing I guess like you I love about this game as well is like mechanical shortcuts. You do have to wander through corridors and other kinds of rooms, you know, a couple of times, but you don't have to, you know, do it the same way every time. And how this game is laid out, it does a really good job of not like, you know, forcing you back through areas without really anything new. Which sounds kind of like, if you think about it, not really that smart, which is a lot of games, so it's kind of the case. Uh, so anyway. Let's wander back through here. Now, this room, like the uh, room with the charge beam, has uh, everyone's favorite mechanic uh, trying to scan multiple thingies. So if you shoot down here, we've got a little panel here. There's a runic symbol that did activate... That didn't activate the symbol, I think. They really want me to hop down here, don't they? Fine. They... <laughs> That would have really irritated me if I just like went past that super quick. There we go, so... Again, same rules. Four symbols. Here's symbol number two. Let's keep getting further up the room. We got more of these uh, sandstone blocks here. Kind of annoying, there's a bunch of wall blocks, and I'm gonna try and ignore the wall blocks. Uh, oh. Do deal a bit of damage. These are actually uh, venom weeds, poisonous plants that retract into the ground of threatened. Venom weeds evolved to thrive in the habitats of large organisms. They lure prey with brightly colored leaves, then detain it with tiny bars that deliver a powerful toxin. Venom weeds rapidly decompose anything that succumbs to them. There's a lot of toxic things for someone who wears a metal suit. down here and I'm taking a bit of bit of heat. Uh, there we go, there's a symbol up there and oh, oh, cool, 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 thanks, thanks enemy, appreciate it. Now they're all gonna chase me down here and make fun of me because I fell the whole distance, the whole 99 yards. And I fell here as well, so yay. I will say, maybe, like, the, uh, the platforming has aged a little bit, but I still think it works decently for what it- and especially for, like, what the game is trying to set out to be. I think this is probably the most perfect way you can, you know, port, uh, what is Metroid into the 3D- into the third dimension. Well, that's the last one that's just kind of chilling down there. And it's like spotting it from up here. Activate everything and this door opens to reveal a dead end corridor. I don't know why they why the Jazz are built it like this, man. It's very weird looking. So anyway, do you have the ability to morph ball bomb and the uh, missile stuff and I still wasn't even paying attention if he even needed the charge beam for anything. It'd probably get in the way if you don't have the charge beam for a while, though. And, uh, I know you will need it in order to get to the, uh... Couple- in a couple of areas, I think you'll need it, so... This box could make it more this. There we go. Enter yet another boss. I think I love how rapid-fire the bosses are in this game as well, like... There's a lot of them, and, and there's a lot of just fun little encounters that you gotta, you know... Figure out in combat, whereas, like... How many bosses are in Super Metroid? Maybe like 10? I think that's a good number of bosses for a SNES game, but this game is just like boom. It's like 18. So this is Flagra. Flagra is gonna flex and also spit out some stuff at us. Uh, but have a have an entry. This mutant plant is the source of the toxic water in the ruins. Flagra's growth cycle has been radically accelerated. As a result, it requires near constant exposure to solar energy to remain active. This exposure has made Flagra's outer shell thick and durable. Its lower root system is unprotected and vulnerable, however. Exploit this floor when possible. Concentrated weapon fire can daze it for short periods. And there's also little tentacles here if you want to scan them. One of Flagra's tentacles fills this narrow drainage channel. Analysis indicates that Flagra's central nervous system is located at the base of the structure. So, they actually teach you that, yeah, if you shoot him, 
he's going to flash yellow. And you can actually kind of sun him for a moment, but if you knock this little solar panel up, Flagra is uh, so upset because he's so, he's so green, he's so, you know, he wants to save the planet. But lack of solar panels means we have to rely on coal. I always, I, I don't know. Anyway, that was Flagger. I hope you enjoyed him. Uh, he takes four hits, and uh, you can tell, you can tell how do they make the hits harder. How do they make the parts of the boss fight harder? Well, that's right. You got a basic the book. Just gonna chill there. So if you can stun him. And kind of dash around them. Just lock on, keep running around until you get targeted. Next one. And then fall over. Oop, there he is. He's got good eyes for a for a boss, you know. You got a credit where credit is due. He's on fire. Cause why not? That was, a that was a blow to the central nervous system. I hope you appreciated that. He's really hopping in the way, is he? I'll use the missiles to just like get him. It's not like you're gonna use the missiles for any other part of this fight. And you'll get all your, your ammo back pretty much by by the, the next fight, so here he is, he's falling over yet again. Don't go too close, because the uh, tentacles knock you back, and it's a bit of a mean hit. I definitely say this boss has a bit of a filter. Like, me as a, a younger person playing this for the first time, I definitely felt, yeah, this was right when it, you know, it started feeling really tough. Because it requires you to, you know, have a bit of meat on taking him out. Sure. I mean, I know I could have gone the other way, but it's okay. There you go, the stun again. Why not? Don't fall on me. There we are. The coup de gras. Or as I would have said as a kid, the coup de grace. There you go. I don't know why he's so upset. We're switching to nuclear. And anyway, yeah, that was the source of all the toxic water. I don't know why there's grass trying to grow in other places. I think that's maybe him trying to spread somewhere. Oh, yeah, that does purify the water, and uh, he was casually chilling with uh, this over here. Jump up a few steps. And embrace the visual aesthetic of Samus that we've known and loved for uh, just this game, because she didn't really look like this in, in earlier games. Something about big Madden football shoulders. I say it looked cool though. Big, bulky, and looks protective as heck. So we have gotten the Varia suit, or as I would have woefully called it, the Varia suit. But this allows you, allows you to access dangerous areas of heat, which is a big thing to note because the next area is all full of fire. And then the game is quick to tell you that uh, you are still slow in water. Just, just by the way, you're slow in water. I love these boxes as well, because uh, you're bound to get a uh, very big health. These are ultra energies, which give you 100 health. Which is a lot of health for someone who still hasn't gotten any upgrades yet. Uh, this is a pulse monger as well. Hold your charge beam and he tries to give you a hug. You don't really need to be next to him, so I'm just going to walk past him. Uh, this room is always a pain when you try to go up it, which you cannot go up it just yet. 
So I just like jumping down. And then Samus is like, oh no, I can't take full damage in this game. So the new Chozo script. The cries of this dying land echo in our ears as we Chozo watch the great poison seep even f ever further into the living pulse of the planet. The dark energy sinks into the trees and waters, devouring all life. Peaceful beasts die by the thousands. Some creatures survive, but their forms grow as twisted and evil as the force that fell from the sky. Many of these mutated monstrosities remain small enough to do little harm, but others grow enormous and threaten our very existence. One such beast defiles our sacred fountain, disgorging poison from its foul form, replacing pure flowing water with cascades of creeping death. Even in the face of such horror, we Chozo do not turn in fear. We are all that stands in the way of this great poison, and it is our duty to contain it. Yeah, they didn't really do a good job with that, did they? <laughs> so, here is uh, an elevator room. This is actually a uh, note. Uh, this is the room over here where uh, we fought the hive, and it all just kind of connects to here. But I shall scan this, and let's take a quick diversion to go in this direction. Right. Just because there's not another opportunity to really go through this room, so. But uh, yeah, if you actually you come back with the morph ball, you basically like find out the hard way that you don't have. Um, you know, the prize suit to really continue on. So, here is another room with a bit of lore on the wall. More lore. Everyone likes it. The future is a vague thing, ever changing and always in doubt. Even if we chose, I could gain the ability to foresee the future. It would be a hollow gift, but we could never hope to control what is yet to occur. The fountain is an example of this. The day may come when its water dries up, and there is nothing we could do to stop such a tragedy. But we do know this. Unlike this uncertain flow of water, the power of our will is strong and enduring. The will of the Chozo will never dry up. So, this is a, a kind of cool puzzle. Um, you got three little slots here. You can use a morph ball to break the first one. And if you're young, you'll probably go, ah, oh, yeah, that's easy. Now, if you were paying attention, you might know that you can actually drop a morph ball and then drop another one above. That will allow you to break this one. Now, the last one doesn't have a cover on it, but it is kind of too high up. So what you got to do is time your morph balls like that, and you can actually double jump. This is an intended mechanic of the game. They're going to actually... I don't think they ever require it, but it is like a real, like... It, it is an optional kind of strat that they do flex quite a bit for some not some optional goodies so i just said optional twice but it's definitely fun i love these like little tech strats that they uh they encourage you to learn we wander back through this room and we find ourselves picking up an energy tank as well as overlooking this uh main plaza yet again so Drop down, and I'm now going to go through the route of, uh, back through this room one last time. Can't re recall if there's ever going to be another time where we go back through these rooms. But we can get everything on the, on the way now. But yeah, just imagine, it's like, oh, 25... Warwalks don't deserve to hit. So now here's a, here's a fun little puzzle. I'm gonna hop up here and break this one block. This then looks like it, it you know, dropped a, another block down, but this will allow uh, you to follow this path. Use your bombs to bounce up through the slots, break the blocks. Now this one bit that I broke earlier. We're able to continue grab yet another missile expansion so again more cool stuff and i love just constantly finding these missiles and energy packs there's a uh, 13 energy tanks i believe in the game and 50 missiles which is a lot of missiles to collect uh well, 50 missile expansions so i guess 250 missiles total um I like how also there's no uh, war wasps in this room so Keep your eyes peeled, there's another little tiny corridor over here. Just allows to pick up yet another missile. Just more missiles. And that's right, there's two of the 50 missile expansions both just sitting in this room. So. There we go, back. Back to the room with the light colors. And the water is not toxic. You can actually stand in the water now. It's all blue. Which is a, a very nice, like, kind of map building 
kind of fact. It's not because you got the, the barrier suit, it's because the water is pure. So finally I'm smashing this open and there's an energy tank right behind here. So yeah, if you're ever struggling, just remember there's an energy tank back there. And once you got the morph ball, you could actually continue going and uh, get another energy tank. But I thought out of convenience and because I'm good, I don't know, I just go through the flagger and then I can do the rounds and work my way up here. Because this now drops us back at the elevator lift room. Down we go into the depths. What is down below? Why, nothing more than uh... Well, it kind of looks similar, but it's the Magmore Caverns. I always love that there's like a bit of transitionary kind of flair to the elevator rooms as well. Like this still kind of looks like the Chozo Ruins, but you're going to see it will descend further into uh, probably the more fiery depths just by dropping down. <laughs> more trick bats. I love showing up. I love these little steam jets and you stand in them and you get this just like this, this orange mist all over your face. So good fun. Yeah, another save point, why not? There's little tubes with lava. So I, I assume they're like, oh we don't we're not gonna <laughs> use our technology to break the natural order, but we are doing geo geothermal generators everywhere. Oh, I actually do. Look at this fun little enemy. This is a Grisby. Sub-volcanic carrion feeder. There's that word again. Can be breached by missiles. The Grisby's... Uh, has been fused together by superheated air. This barrier stands up to everything but concussive blasts. Its intelligence is limited to instinctive scavenging patterns. So suddenly, instead of, like, all these ultra-defensive enemies, it's just like... Oh, it's just they are tough as nails. I make funny noises. Oops. Still, oops. I'm just gonna keep going. Look at these little cute dudes as well. These are little burrowers, tunneling insect predators. The burrow is similar to the beetle, though it prefers to spend more time underground. It seeks seismic disturbances, then surfaces to attack. It has enough cunning to realize when something is too large for it to handle. Beyond that, it is fairly ignorant. What it lacks in brains, it makes up for with aggression. You gotta watch out for them. And you gotta watch out for, well, have a little overview. What is the Magmor Caverns? It is lava, and it also has the uh, same musical tune as the Norfair Depths in Super Metroid, which is a very nice throwback. The little burrows are attacking in the last room. Now this guy is super intimidating at first. This is the Magmor himself, fire-breathing serpent that dwells in lava. Magmors prefer extreme heat zones and are susceptible to frigid attack forms. Thus, uh, sightless, they navigate the lava currents using their sonar receptors. Magmors have a keen sense of smell, enabling them to pinpoint targets with startling accuracy. That's right, they take... Nice. They take a couple of, a couple of hits. And then blow their heads off. Sure. Uh, these are also a new enemy. These are puffers. Unstable gas-filled organisms will rupture on contact. Buffers fill their bodies with lethal metavibrium gas and float about in search of food. If ruptured, the gas in the puffer is violently released. Despite their fragile bodies, puffers are aggressive hunters. The gas cloud they release upon death is often fatal to the creature that brings them down as well. So unlike the blast caps, these actually have a lasting poop smell. You don't want to be in the poop smell. You can kind of work around it and to some degree they're actually a bit easier to deal with before you've taken them out. When you walk into them. We got a little wall, we can break it with a with a morph ball bomb. I love how this is a uh, the fun little room though. Just got like two hearts to it. Here's a little fun enemy, and I love these guys. This is one of those uh, enemies I remember Greg Kasavin like talking about. I'm just like, oh, that's so cool. Uh, this is the Triclops, hard-shelled creature with powerful jaws. The Triclops is a hunter-gatherer. It collects small creatures and bits of food stuff, then deposits them elsewhere for later consumption. The hard tripartite mandibles it uses to move earth and rock are quite strong and difficult to escape once ensnared. But like the kind of fun thing is that like they walk around, they try and hunt you down. But if you drop a bomb near them, they eat the bomb and then just blow up. Which is very unfortunate for them. But it's funny for me, so I appreciate it. 
this is actually a rather large room, and you are supposed to just continue and go up in that direction. But if you've got a keen eye, there's actually another room off in a side direction. If you hop down here, there's a little corridor that you can walk down where I will proceed to snake around. Gotta watch out for these guys. And go up through this tube, where you will climb up a few steps and find... I love this little lavery room over here. It's just like, oh, okay, like, what are you looking for over here? It's just a room of lava. It doesn't even go up anywhere. It's just a room with lava. And it was a room with a missile, but... No more missile today. We ain't missing nothing. That is, that is a terrible segue. Terrible sentence, sorry. So, I've got a, a very short topic that I want to kind of hark on. Um, IGN's written an article, uh, or at least two people at IGN wrote an article, about how uh, we should strive for remasters to not, or remakes, to not just be straight recreations of older games. Which is an incredibly generalized uh, kind of opinion piece. Where it's like, I, I get what they're talking about, and I don't deny that there is merit to games being remakes that are entirely different to older games uh, that they're based on. But, uh, like, let, like, we got a scale of, like, how different a remake can be. We have Prey 2017, which is all at the end of, it's so entirely different. We have, uh, pretty much, like, Nintendo Virtual Console and, uh, these are also stronger turrets, but for some reason they have the same name. Um, we have Nintendo Virtual Console and whoever's selling uh, Glover on Steam. Like, we have examples of that, where it's like, you know, okay, there's nothing different. It's literally just an emulated game. Uh, and we got some, some that are kind of in between. We got like the Night Dive kind of remasters, where they've taken parts from various older games and stuck them together to turn them into something new. Um, and games like uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, where it's like, yeah, it is still kind of the old game, but there's little bits to it. And then, uh, obviously, the two recent examples are Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is so different. It's way different. And the Dead Space Remake, which is kind of halfway. I think it rides the line between being a remake and a remaster really closely. I wonder if you can actually, like, scan these and see these like geothermal routing and immersion pistons and all this stuff. Phase on residue, yeah this is when you start kind of going, hmm, maybe it wasn't the shows that were building these uh, geothermal plants. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the, the double bomb jumping is uh, put to the test in this room if you've got, if you break the, the box twice it falls out from underneath you. So you really have to just get this. On, you know, on an attempt. If you drop down from any of these, though, you just kind of work your way back, because the room just continues on. It's kind of fun how, like, on a first playthrough, it kind of seems like, you know, there's something more to it, but really, the ability is always there to get those, which is kind of fun. Um, now, the ITN article also makes a very false equivalence, I think. They make this case where, like, uh, there's the movie Psycho from 1960, Alfred Hitchcock, and then there's a 1998 shot-for-shot -shot remake of it. And they're like, people didn't cry, this is by the way where you need the charge beam. If you didn't pick up the charge beam by now, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, and by the way, yeah, out of the, the molten lava comes the snowy wastes of the Fendrana Drifts. I love how this game can just go from fiery, you know, I'm going to say volcano, it's not really a volcano yet, to, to snowy lands and it doesn't feel like you really like jumped, jumped the shark, it's just kind of the natural way that this world kind of unfolds. And uh, oh, I 
I scanned an enemy and I didn't read them out. Sorry, man. This is a flicker bat scavenger with optical camouflaging that renders it invisible to the naked eye. Flicker bats are deceptive creatures. The only way to track them reliably is with x-ray imaging. They fly ceaselessly, hunting insects and other small prey that float on the air currents. Flicker bats tend to fly in cyclical hunting patterns using primitive sonar to navigate. We also got this little enemy over here, which is uh, a crystallite. Territorial Cold Weather Scavenger. The shell of a crystallite reflects beam weapons and can only be cracked by a concussive blast. They hang upside down in, in an ice cave during their larval stage. Moisture runs off its body and forms the hard ice shell, which the crystallite retains for the rest of its life. That's right, you can shoot these and they're just... You gotta blow them up like that. But, yeah, they, they make this equivalence that, like, oh, well, if... You know, people rip on... Um, actually, weirdly, they mention, like, remakes that change the original. And one example they use is, like, the 2011 The Thing. Which is a very, like, odd one to use. Because I swear people rip on that one for its CG that just isn't, like... Well, it's not the original's effects, I'll just say that. That's, that's the bit that people don't like about it. Um, with the Psycho, you know, remake, the big thing that you're trying to catch is... Um, by the way, you have to scan that one thing in order for this door to unlock. The, the one catch is that you can watch both the original and this remake on the same device, whereas clearly with video games, that's not always the case. Uh, he has a scatter bamboo. Pulsing tendrils of energy extend from the creature's body. Like all bombers, these creatures can only be harmed by electrical energy. Proximity to these life forms may result in electrical visor interference. It is possible to avoid engaging scatter bombers by rolling into the morph ball and slipping between the rotating energy stream. I love these enemies because it's like you go up next to them and they're just like. It's so good fun. I love it. And that's one thing, again, about the presentation of this game is that, like, the enemies play with you in the visor this is like the thing you know this is a super cool thing and i just love how there's all these weird enemies all over the place this is a baby she goth glacial predator i shall protects vulnerable dorsal area young she goths grow a resilient shell of ice on their backs which serves to protect a layer of vulnerable flesh with this being their only weak point Baby she goths will turn quickly in order to not allow predators the opportunity to strike at their backs. Powerful hunters, they fire bursts of ultra-cold gas at potential prey, then feast on their frozen victim. And, uh, these guys are not too bad, but you kind of take them out. You can actually see their shells, uh, also. <laughs> you gotta rapidly tap B to get free. You see, uh, see the shell slowly breaking, and then eventually it cracks off. And eventually enough of a blow to his back knocks him down, but, uh, you know, that's that a bit tragic. And there were babies, too. And I actively went in my way to, to destroy that one. So... But yeah, you can watch both versions of Psycho on the same uh, device. Dead Space! You can also play both versions of Dead Space on PC. Uh, maybe... I guess... I think you can on the Xbox 360. Like, there's enough backporting. I'm gonna read another, another log. This is an ice burrower. A burrower adapted to sub-freezing climates. A hardy life form. The ice burrower has adapted to the frigid clime of Fendrana. It spends most of its time tunneling through the frozen soil. It will occasionally surface to attack passers-by. There's a bunch of enemies that, by the way, will disappear between going into, uh, you know, coming back into the, this room, you know, much later, so. Working around this room, uh, you are now on this higher ledge. Make sure you don't drop down so you can continue walking onwards. Or one moves, why not? It's the fun ones that come up to you and give you a good kiss right there. Can't go too too far in this room, so just continue on and uh, go down here. And uh, I know I gotta read one more log, one more lore entry before I can finally speak for a while. Uh, so just casually drop down here, and uh, there's a little bit on the wall here. Here we go. So, so many creatures suffer beneath the blight upon the land, and we chose are no exception. But for all of our pain, we can at least believe in the promise of the future. Unlike the apparitions that have begun to appear, entities that feel neither hope nor solace, we call these doomed souls the turned. 
taking ghostly Chozo forms, they know no reason beyond the instinctive urge to protect our land. They will likely exist in limbo forever. We have come to believe that a time may never come when we can once again open the door and banish the darkness we've contained. Even so, our vigilance will forever remain. We believe that on some far off day, a savior will come and continue what we have begun. For that savior, we will leave our ancient weapons and armor. The soul who can gather them will be the entrusted one, the only being who can reverse the evil that grows here. Look at this fate of the universe kind of thing, and they're like, yeah, I mean, someone's bound to be able to use the tech. I'm like, yeah, okay. But it's also kind of nice, like, you know, going into the game, you don't get any of this explanation. And perhaps other games would kind of force it upon you in a cutscene. This game just goes, you might find it, you might not find it. Do you need it? Not necessarily, but it enriches your experience of the game when you've got all these, like, lore entries scattered all throughout the place. And bonus points, having some kind of importance to where these laws are. This lore was obviously right next to the boost ball, which is a fun... Uh, is it actually a new item? I think it is actually a new item. Um, and uh, there's one thing that, I guess as well, it's like the world was kind of crafted somewhat by the Chozo. And I think the Chozo really loved Tony Hawk because they decided to add skateboard halfpipes. Use the boost ball to keep gaining some height. And uh, you can land on, land on this guy too. But I love how like suddenly this boost ball which seems like, oh okay, it's just there to go fast. But it's actually there mostly to operate machinery and to use these halfpipes and really get to places you could never get to before. Which! Leads to probably the worst bit of backtracking in the entire game because I'm now going to go through so many rooms without actually, like, picking up anything. I, the, there's going to be a lot of rooms of just me wandering back for a bit, so. Which means I can talk about the IGM thing a little more. Um, but yeah, like, we should really not, also they pull the semantic game of like, oh, some of these are actually remasters and not remakes. So I'm like, okay, but then there's also re-releases. You know, like, if we're really going to count this. By the way, as a gentle reminder to the player, it's like, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> you've been looking for this guy and he's wandering in that direction. You should probably go in that direction. Although Shadow is a little bit, a little bit stiff. Um, but yeah, you can safely drop down because you got the, the boost ball. That's all you need. Can't go anywhere else really, just yet. Um, but yeah, like, I don't want to get into the semantics of what's a re-release, what's a remaster, what's a remake. Uh, there's a lot of that, so I just like saying, like, how much different is it from the original release? Um, and a lot of the cases, it's like, okay, like, there's a lot of HD remasters from the PS3 era that are just the old game, but now it's in HD and maybe the graphics are a bit more HD, like, they've improved the textures a little bit. We've got games like the Demon Souls remake-ish, where it's like, it is still kinda all the same game, they didn't really tone up too much of it, but it definitely has been remade with newer graphics in mind, and that's often a coat of paint a lot of people are okay with. They're like, yeah, like, you know, the, the, sometimes there's something to an original game's art style, but sometimes a game does need that fresh coat of paint. Uh, so back in this room, uh, the direction I want to go in is uh, further in this kind of path, and hopefully I don't get shot by these things, but I'm going to try and get in that door without getting hit by any of the turrets. They're all directly behind me and shooting me. Oh boy, thanks. There we go. I don't think there's any actual, like, new enemies on the way as well. You're going to see some rooms, and uh, some people are again going to go, you might be missing items, and I'm like, no, 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 I got it in mind. I always, I always try and rush jump that, and I, it never works. It never works. I'm gonna see if I can sneak past this guy as well. Um, but the big thing about the IGN article is that it's needlessly reductive. It, you shouldn't really be saying games should only be the remakes, at least Dead Space levels and onwards. I think there is merit to games doing that, and developers shouldn't really feel afraid to have remakes like that, and especially, I, I love this one by the way. So you've got this big guy up there, and then you've got this wonderful little pathway, and it goes, oh, it's so cool, I love it. Uh, but game developers shouldn't feel afraid to, you know, make remakes of older games and make them a little different to older games. That's fine. 
Um, I feel like people need to be very candid about what an older game is. Don't ride on the brand potential, or the brand namesake, but the reason why the Dead Space remake works is because it is the original Dead Space, and they've kept the feeling of the original Dead Space without just using the name to reboot also. By the way, yeah, just while you're walking on this bridge, it's like, oh, yeah, there's a missile. I think you could actually go into this room fairly soon. This one's a bit annoying though, like the first, if you come here first, because it's just like, you gotta climb up through this room, and this room takes a while to, to get back up through. Whereas, like, if you go, if you go in the path that I'm going down, it's like, well, you just come out of this room once, and that's kind of all you need to worry about, really. And I can finally blow up the zoomers. Oh no! Okay. Um. But yeah, like, there's so many different ways to release a game off the same franchise in some way, and I feel like you should probably use a new name if it's not the same game. That's my general trend. It's like, if Dead Space's remake was not, like, if it was trying to reboot the franchise in its own way, maybe you shouldn't call it Dead Space, but I'm okay with what they've done now. Uh, this is a blood flower, able to eject toxic spores. Toxins are poisonous, even to the blood flower itself. Three mouth mod, uh, sorry, three mouth nodules protrude from the stalk beneath the flower, each with a rudimentary brain cluster and the ability to spew toxic fumes at anything within a five meter radius. The spores ejected from the stigma at the center of the flower are sufficient to kill this creature if they explode in its vicinity. You have to explode near this creature, which is why they planted it next to all these blood flowers. That's why, sorry, next to all the, the gel sacs. And then he just blows up like that, so. Uh, so this room, by the way, is at the top of here. Pretty much the third room of the game. Now, you may have noticed, there was a half pipe here, and these beetles are potentially gonna get in the way. That was pretty, oh, that was pretty good, actually. Um, so working your way up here, uh, We'll find another bit of wall to break. Continue down the wall a little bit. And wouldn't you know... It's, a, it's another corridor room. And wouldn't you know, this leads back to... Where the ship is. But you're on this ledge behind it. Now, kind of annoyingly, make sure you do the jumps or else you're gonna mess it up, you know. You gotta do the jumps. Now, would you look at that? Sitting in this room right here. Potentially my favorite item, and everyone's favorite item. The glowy, the shiny, you know it's good because the, uh, <laughs> the letterbox bars are glowing orange. This is the space jump boots. Press B to jump while in the air. Press B again to jump again. This uncovers so much of the ground. Uh, speedrunners realize, hey, if it's right here at the beginning of the game, is there a way we can get up here? They found out you could, like... In the uh, Japanese version, you can scan onto these things on the ceiling. And you can actually, like... You can actually, like, side jump and, like, try and get up here. These are just... Oh boy, that's, that's just way out of my reach. Um, but, uh, yeah, now we've got the ability to double jump. There's so much of the game that uncovers because of this, but... Kind of annoyingly, all the main items in the game are fairly linearly locked there's like out of all the things you can do with the double jump you can't get more than one major item pretty much at a time so that means you know where do we have to go unfortunately all the way back to the Fendrana drifts because you've probably been thinking has there actually been anything to double jump off of not really much so well, there was a missile uh back here which just required the morph ball so so time to go basically back the exact way I just came. Literally nothing to scan, nothing to talk about, so... Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, IGN's been very reductive about this, and it's a very un... you know... It's a very disagreeable article, because it's... It, it kind of feels, and this is a very cynical perspective I have, it kind of feels if... IGN employees were so worried about not having played previous games in a game's franchise that they want all remakes to be completely different just so they don't have to compare 
to the original, or at least, like, have a crazy, you know, understanding of, is this game worth it if you played the original, because they can kind of shallowly go, oh, well, I've played two hours of Final Fantasy VII, and Final Fantasy VII Remake is like this, so I know roughly, well, it's not turn-based. Like, yeah, you can say that, but, you know, there were viewers, and unfortunately, there's gonna be a lot of people who play Final Fantasy VII Remake, who want to know how different is it to the original, or to the, you know, to the PS1 game. And that's something I feel like a lot of review sites are getting worse at. They're not very good at relating people's previous experiences and their previous preferences to new games. They keep kind of reviewing them as if they've only played games for like five to ten years, which is fine. But like, five to ten years now puts you at this point where like, Bioshock Infinite came out ten years ago. We're at this point where, like, there's a lot of games older than Bioshock Infinite. I know, I was like, yeah, I must reveal the play the original Bioshock. By the way, we're back in this room. Work your way around here. Oh, gosh. I'm on fire. <laughs> okay, don't, don't do that. Work your way around here. I love how with the double jump, it's very easy to just kind of land yourself back on that. Just be a bit careful. Because it's very easy to drop off. And there's, there's going to be a lot of more full bits where you can't drop off easily, but if you work your way all the way around... Little missile. Another, another cool missile. There you go. And the double jump lets you get past so many of the sections without even needing to worry about it. Um, but yeah, I feel like I just did a general critique of most big game review websites, but I feel like like, the biggest reason why they have, like, dissuaded me is not for any, like, ideological reason necessarily, but they are game review sites that don't describe my interests or what I look for in the game. And I know I'm playing a 20-year-old, um, it's crazy to me that this is 20 years old, because when I first played it on my channel, it was 8 years old. And I am ancient now. I am actually ancient. That was, like, one of the first Let's Plays I did with, like, my voice had cracked. Literally, go to, go to part one of, of that, and there's a guy who says, Wow, puberty got you hard, and I was like, yeah, I guess. I think it was more that I would recorded, like, all my old, well, all the videos before, like, much earlier. And the Metro Prime one was, like, one of the first ones I had done, like, fairly later. That surprised me that my voice really, like, did that hard back then, though. But, hey, I, I love my older videos. It's just, like, a... This was me back then, and I probably said dumb stuff and did dumb stuff back then. It's fun, it's a fun like, learning experience, and it's fun going through this game, and probably I get to compare with that, and I go, okay, all the videos were 15 minutes long and I did 39 videos, which means I know that game took me 10 hours. I'm predicting this is probably going to take me 6, maybe 7. But, uh, we're back to the Fendrana Drifts. It's like, uh, I don't know, when you think about it, I thought that, or maybe I could do it in two streams? Is two streams really pushing it? Maybe. I feel like I want to, like, take in this game, but I'm also reading out the logs. Like, first go, so. Now, make sure you save here. Uh, sometimes there's a bit of, like, there, there is a bit of, uh, you know, there's a boss coming up, but the save is an existing save that you've looked at before. But it's always good to just be like, hey, you know, the save is just there. Stop off it. If you're doing a speed run, who cares about saving? You only need to save if you need to heal. Now, one thing I love with the double jump is that uh, you're able to do uh, this fun thing where you stand on this ledge and you can actually jump up to this right here, but bonus points. You keep going. And voila! You have now jumped over here where uh, we have revealed Cordite. This is a brand new material. You can't, you can't witness it. Oh, sorry, you can't uh, break it just yet. I love how mean they are as well by having the the enemy that you know comes at you when you charge your beam. So. Got a little she goth up there. Pretty sure there's uh, another little chilling. There he is. He's. He's, he's, he's going around, hold on. Get around. Look at this guy. This is uh, 
an ice parasite, a scavenger with a crystalline outer shell. Parasites are hardy creatures, able to adapt to any environment within three generations. The ice parasite is a prime example. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba, that's the title of the game. Having adjusted to a frigid climate, this vermin now thrives in it. Omnivorous, it can exist in areas hostile to most life forms. How very cool of these things. How many times can I say cool in the ice area? But yeah, with the double jump, it's like now all platforming is like no issue. You just keep going. Oh, pff, unless you side jump like an idiot like me. But I love like, you know, how there's still like these frozen temples that we've wandered into. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I got there. I got there. So... Uh, this is a kind of interesting puzzle. I'm pretty sure you can scan this guy. Because the statue's hands seem to be frozen in place, which actually kind of throws you off, because then you get up here and you go, What do I do? This is a statue. It's flawless. Okay. This is a statue. Uh, several stretch fractures can be seen running off. Like, you just have to notice that out of all of these, like, statues over here, this is a warrior. And this is a, uh, philosopher. You just have to notice that one of them is not flawless, and it can be taken out with... What's that brimstone, which is a missile? And you can hop right in with the Morphle. And that's your, your key secret, that that activates the uh, thing out here. And that's the fun part about Metroid, it's spotting the fun bits of... Uh, the puzzle just lying around. Work your way through here. Oh, yeah, this room takes forever to just like, work through. Every time I died at this boss when I was younger, I'm like, I hated like having to take out like all these bits right here. And then the box comes back, and you gotta break the box. So, but anyway, yeah, like IGN and most other review sites, uh, yeah, the biggest problem with their reviews is obviously like when the reviews don't line up with what you, you know, feel by playing these games. Uh, I understand not every reviewer is going to be like that, but at some point, everyone at IGN is like that. And that's a real problem for them. Also, look at that! Oh, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they plan. There's an invisible wall. Gotta watch out for these guys. Little baby she -goths. I have so many missiles, like 55 is actually, I think the first time I beat this game, I think I had like 80. They've actually unleashed a few more as well. But yeah, they're kind of mean, because you can't hit them from the front. Or really above, you gotta, you gotta wait for them to get behind to turn around. This guy's just chilling all the way over there. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. I gotta keep saying chilling every time. I haven't even been saying any other words to try and do ice puns, other than, like, chill and cool. Anyway, I've killed four babies, which means I am very accomplished. Look at this giant wall, and here's a big guy. Meet... ...the, uh... Range. Meet the Shigoth, the supreme predator of the Fendrana Drift. Shigoths are vul invulnerable to most beam weapons. Crystals on their back absorb energy, which they can fire at prey. She gods have poor stamina. They hyperventilate after using their breath attack, making their mouth area vulnerable. The soft underbelly of the she gods is susceptible to concussive blasts. In battle, they expel blasts of frigid gas to ensnare their targets. They're also fond of ramming and trampling their hapless prey. So the key thing is, if you fire your charge beam at him, he actually sucks in the attack to his top, which he then kind of rebounds as. Uh, as the, the breath attack. And that allows you to actually get him with bullets. Or with a uh, missile, sorry, not bullets. You also don't get a health bar on this guy, so you gotta kinda good luck on this one. But uh this one's one where as a kid I used to always kind of feel worried about like depleting my ammo despite the fact that it's like this is this is just like a boss. This is way easier with missiles. So you're clearly gonna get more missiles later on. He is really fond of freezing that wall. You can actually uh, use morphle bombs to. I actually might as well demonstrate this. You can actually use morphle bombs to like you know, crack under him a bit, but. Definitely is taking quite a lot of missiles. Like, I don't know how many of the game kind of expects it to have by now. There's probably more you can find 
by now, but just along the path that I've gone. Hi, are you good? You have been charging so much and you're not shooting anything. There you go. There you go. Give him enough times, he falls over. Okay, we beat him. Bring back the charge. I oh, turned myself. Bring back the weapon. And reveal. The wave beam. I'm now 44 into the first stream, and I've got the uh, the second weapon. So the wave beam fires these electrical particles. You can fire a charge shot like that, which actually hones into enemies. Or you can fire these wonderful alternating triangle beams. Um, so yeah. But most importantly, it's used to also open these purple doors. But all the uh, the secondary beams, or all the all the beams have this extra utility, and this is one thing super cool about the game. Typically, Metroid is just like, oh, you just turn on, you know, the wave beam, you turn on this new weapon you've got. But now the game's just like, these are separate beams you have by clicking the right stick in that direction in the same way as you hit the D-pad to change your visor. And now, the different weapons are different tools in your weapon arsenal, which kind of unfortunately does mean that, like, yeah, okay, you're going to use the charge beam for a while of the game. Or rather, instead of the power beam, because it's just like, it's a much more powerful shot when it hits. Suddenly you don't have to mash the A button. Although you can't spam it. This is me constantly spamming the A button. But still, it's a, it's a really neat weapon and uh, kind of shows how fun this game kind of starts getting after you, you know, start breaking the original few items you had. You might be going, Samus always had the wave beam in the other games. Why didn't she have it this time? And the answer is, uh, this is a reboot. Technically. Is it a reboot if it's still got story elements? Different reboots can't decide whether they have elements of the previous games or not. So... Well, this is kind of neat. After after that, you can scan this. This is a hanging rock structure that appears to have a weak spot near its base. Some stalactites can be dislodged from ceilings, allowing them to be used as platforms across otherwise unreachable areas. So now with the space jump... This guy is chilling here. Also, we've got this. More Chozo lore. As the great poison reaches ever, ever further into the planet, we Chozo begin to feel the gnawings of despair. Before it is too late, we now make our last stand. We have begun to build a temple to contain this darkness. At its heart, we will place a cipher, a mystical lock powered by twelve artifacts, and filled with as much power as we Chozo can harness. We wonder though, even when we are done, will it be too late? And will the power of the temple and the cipher itself prove strong enough to hold back the poisonous tide that even now swells within the ground, threatening all life? Very on this. But yeah, with the space jump, you can hop up these ledges and have a little high ground where you can fire a missile at the stalactite. This always reminds me that stalactites are the ones that hang from the ceiling and stalagmites with a G is what uh, comes out of the ground. Although they've got two different names. Um, there you go, there's the Shriek Bats. I was wondering where they went. Ice Shriek Bats are ice encased ceiling dwellers like standard Shriek Bats. These creatures are easily spotted with thermal imaging. They roost on cave ceilings, subsisting on insects. Subsisting is a great word. Reptiles and small mammals. Fiercely territorial, they will dive bomb anything that wanders near. Like me, right now. So. Not too bad to deal with them, but... Yeah, definitely. It's like, once you get the space jump in the wave beam, you're good. You can go through these areas, no sweat. Just run into these now. I've got a bit more health. Now, this is a fun room. Uh, it's still got these, like, guys who go around here, but, uh, it's got a little new tool for us to use. This is a, uh, a standard spinner device. The generator belts of the spinner can be activated by rapid rotational force. Use the boost ability of the Morph Ball when inside a spinner to activate the device. So, this is a cool little mechanic of what the boost ball can be used for. You kind of use it to spin these slots down. Spin these little things down. And this, uh, opens up fun little puzzle where we've activated um, a couple of, uh, I guess, water pipes. They just opened up, that's really it. It's probably a term for it, like a latch or a cap or something. Open all of them up, and this exposes a little slot, which I am also thinking, have I actually... I love how, by the way, you get like, you know, Things are saying the spin is shut off. 
These are unanchored platforms that float on the surface of the water. Did you know that all ice floats on the surface of water? These are bomb slots as well, which I feel like I might have seen them, but I just forgot to scan them by now. So scan, oh sorry, bomb this, and this will open up a bit of water. There you go. So you do get timed on this one, you gotta be quick. And uh, the trick is to watch out for these guys, but also to completely ignore all of this and just go down this little tube. Which actually leads to an energy tank. Not very nice of them. It technically undoes the water because you took a bit too, ta too long. Also, the joys of water. There's going to be a couple of moments in this game where you deal with water and it's like, oh, that's the worst. But this is also a big tell, and the game the game has kind of hinted at this a little bit. Uh, there's actually an area you can go to right now, and it's filled with water, but you can kind of explore it a bit before you realize, yeah, I can't I can't go here yet. So, um, I guess that's another thing where it's like, uh, greetings, Bob, how's it going? I guess that's the thing where it's like, this game makes a lot of sense if you take the hints really early, if you realize how, like, Metroid Prime is so good fun, I love it. It's, it is full on, my favorite game of all time. So with that, that basically just kind of lets you go up to the very top. Look away up to this door. That's okay, because uh, the VOD will be up very, well, very soon after the end of the stream, and I've still got a bit to go. I'm feeling, I am feeling that like, hmm, I've already got the wave beam. I'm thinking, like, if I pull closer to, Three hours? Maybe two and a half. I might be able to beat the game in two streams. That's that's the thing I'm, I'm thinking. So we got these turrets. That's, that's the turret again. But I love how just in one fell swoop, suddenly, there's a guy about to jump on me. Uh, oh my gosh, hi there. Watch out, we have been in, in, invited to the Shadow Pirate, a pirate forces trained and equipped for stealth operations, the select group of space pirates have access to sophisticated cloaking technology. This gear drains high levels of power, however, forcing them to rely solely on melee weapons in battle. Use enhanced detection gear when fighting these units. This is what I love about uh, these space pirates. We had the ones from before, but you'll notice that, like, these... Well, this guy's... Uh, I love that you can do these ragdoll hits as well. You stun them and you just kind of hit them with the missile. Now, kind of... Bizarrely, Samus has gone straight from Chozo Ruins to Space Pirate Holdout. Which has also triggered triggered a bunch of locked doors and some, some barriers going on. But uh, yeah, we got some goods. We get to fight some Space Pirates. Suddenly some uh, even fights, I guess? Even? I don't know if the even's fair with Samus, but definitely fights against enemies with guns. These are Space Pirates. They're sentient aggressive species, well-trained in weapon and melee combat. Space pirates wield Gavanic accelerated cannons and forearm-mounted sights in combat. The species seeks to become the dominant force in the galaxy, and the technology may help them realize this goal. Ruthless and immoral, the pirates care little for the cost of their ambition, and the results matter, and they take these very seriously. And they have a real fun theme. But yeah, the key trick I find is just hit him with a charge shot and then a missile. It knocks him all out every time. Uh, what was it? So, that's cool. But suddenly there's like droning noises, there's technological noises, you can actually read some of these as well. Project Titan specimen is immobilized in the quarantine cave. There's a lot of just like foreshadowing as well, like, how many like logs have I read about just like things where like, once you know the game, you're like, oh my gosh. Like, Project Titan, Phazon Ore, like I, I guess you could probably get the hint about Phazon right now. Um, thermal imaging can be used to detect weak areas in the casing. Improvements must be made in the shell, uh, to the shell in the event that these weaknesses are found by aggressors. Like, oh, okay. Phazon ore appears to bind through phazon energy. Thermal imaging is required to detect the highest concentration of radioactivity, which serves to bind the stone together. Wow! There's all this lo lore literally about... Literally about, like, the next boss. Which is not for a little bit, mind you. 
downloaded the map for this area. So, yeah, that as well. You get a nice, nice little map and you realize that the Fendrana Drifts actually might be the largest part of the game, I think. Or the Chozo Ruins might actually be the largest. Um, but yeah, even though I've only explored like these few rooms here, and actually this isn't even the whole map, this kind of stops pretty much by, uh... Uh, this, this stops by where, where, like, we need to get to, so I guess that's, that's the key thing. Um, but yeah. Oh, I love, I love just the variety of the places you go to and how seamlessly you just go from, like, one area to the next, which is something I feel like Metro Prime isn't uniquely a way, you know, sorry, it's, it's not the first game to ever try and do that. You've got games like Unreal, uh, which does a great job of kind of going from one area to another. Um, I think even, like, Duke Nukem 3D kind of makes you feel very, like, going, you know, like a whole episode is kind of a string of different kinds of ideas, but they're kind of linked together a little bit. Um, research Lab Hydra. So, there is a lot of lore here. I'm just going to be reading out a lot of lore in a few minutes. You could also just, uh, hit these guys with a few charge shots because they, they don't take too much, but the second charge shot does take its time and got more of an enemy kind of progressing on you. Is he gonna come out or am I just gonna I'm just gonna read read lore. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Uh, we have codified the newfound energy sources Phazon, a V-index mutagen of which we have very little reliable data. Indications point to a meteor of unknown origin impacting an indeterminable time ago, expelling Phazon into the environment. This material appears to possess lifelike characteristics, mutating organic life forms strong enough to withstand its poison. These mutations appear promising, with abrupt evolutionary leaps appearing in single generation reproduction. Plans to establish a full science team on Talon 4 are being finalized. Okay. Have some more lore for you. Mining operations have begun near the crater where Phazon appears to be most concentrated. Daily Phazon yields have increased 44% and our mining system becomes more streamlined as personnel and equipment flows increase. Several incidents of Phazon induced madness have been reported, prompting augmented life support regulations in the deeper chambers. Symptoms include loss of equilibrium, erratic respiration, muscle spasms, and in most extreme cases, hallucinations. A timeline reassessment for the refinery operation is recommended as the material proves more unstable than initial analysis indicated. We got some bits like this, like Xenom SA is undergoing relocation. Hmm. Hmm. That's a fun little reference, isn't it? We got a bit more over here as well. Uh, most terraforming and retrofitting of security checkpoints in Talon 4 is complete, but we continue to research the alarming epidemic of breaches by local creatures. Door records show no unauthorized entries, so we must presume the creatures are either slipping in undetected during daily personal moves, or else finding their way in through subterranean tunnels. We have found many small breaches of this latter sort, and plug them wherever we can, but it is unlikely that we will ever achieve full extermination within our current timetable. I appreciate some of these fun logs as well that aren't like, you know, they're not even like, anything. Oh, rip. This makes you realize, like, these are probably actually where, like, they stored mad space pirates. Um, there's some more logs while we're at it. Uh, da -da -da. Our initial tests exposing Talon 4's indigenous parasites to Phazon appear to be successful. Increases in strength, size, and aggressiveness are common in all test subjects, as well as unforeseen evolutions like additional poison sacs within the abdomen and the appearance of a second ring of mandibles in several subjects. These creatures were chosen because of their resilience, and it appears possible that given enough exposure to Phazon, they may one day be able to survive on any planet we transport them to. Our methods will have to be refined. We currently have a 100% extinction rate after the fourth infusion period, and most survivors of the third infusion stage are so violent and uncontrollable that they have to be euthanized. Even still, we remain hopeful that further experimentation will result in a success. This is definitely like, just kind of like, yeah, it's a bit of lore dump if you're reading all this, but... Ice Beetle, you know, like a temperature regulation, like that kind of stuff. I remember correctly before that there was not any lore spelled out before this game, is not 2D Metroids actually had. <coughs> yeah, the, the 2D Metroids didn't have uh, text. I think there were like comics and other kinds of things that kind of tied things together. Not like, I don't know if they actually had comic series, but definitely just... Uh, I want to say, like, promotional bits and things here and there. Um, but definitely, like, this is, you know, if, if you love, uh, like, 
world building and lore, it's like, this game is just like, boom. It's just like, it's all told in a way that's like, these nice short little snippets. Enough to tell you, it, like, enough about one thing and then you piece them all together. Knock them off the ledge, I love it. Um, if anything as well, like, I think a lot of, a lot of the IGN types really love their non-linear storytelling and this game, like, just does it so perfectly. just got like bits all over the place right now. Xeno behavioral. Strain replication is now in the way. Prep work on yeah okay. Let's get rid of the car. Ah gosh. Oh I love also using the wave paint to take out the turrets because instead of blowing up they start going all crazy to start walking around, looking around the place, shooting everywhere. Do not handle sedating. Okay. Pretty short. Yeah, we got this. There's more logs up here. Tissue samples from stasis tanks must be hand carried to Lab Hydra for analysis. Yeah, we got. I have a bit more pirate data. Research outpost Glacier 1 in the Fendrana Drifts region of Talon 4's mountains is operating at 85% capacity. Sub-zero temperatures have made the Metroid sluggish and easy to control. Metroid? Even those well into phase on infusion cycles, cold containment stasis tanks are sufficient for the juveniles, but some of the larger Metroids have been moved to quarantine caves for safety purposes. Security doors remain an issue as malfunctions due to ice occur every day. Large predators in the waste are also concerned as they continue to kill personnel and breach secure areas. Unfortunately, it has become clear that our containment teams cannot neutralize all of them without a vast increase in munitions and soldiers. I love how, like, you're, you're gonna see Metroids later but it's just like, oh my goodness, Metroids? I love how, as well, like... Like, you pick up all this, like... All this stuff. You know, like, how many how many bosses have I fought? How many items have I got? This is only now, like, the first kind of, met, you know, Metroid name drop, let alone visual drop in the, in the moment. guys are shooting all over the place. I love this room as well, and I love how kind of iconic various rooms in this game are. Like, just like, seeing the structure of the room. That guy is chilling over there, and now he's about to fade out, because there's only so many ragtolls I can have on screen at once. Um, but one thing I love about this game is that, uh, uh, like, and especially a lot of 3D games realize that strong architecture super helps in, like, making the game world feel great. By the way, how many... Have I ever mentioned that Samus' eyes appear when there's a large blast, like, right next to her face? You kind of see it right there. You'll definitely see it later in the game. Um, anyway, I have some more pirate data. Uh, phase on mining is underway. Several garrisons have been established and terraforming of the Trozo ruins is underway. Security systems are operational and science team continues to make progress in their biotech research. The Fedrana Drifts have proven to be an optimal location for the research headquarters and soon it will be joined by a fully operational combat base and starport. If command's predictions are half true, we shall rise to dominance in the sector within the Decker cycle. Truly, these are glorious times. Gotta have that holographic map coordinate. Uh, scans of the spiral sector detected a massive energy spike emanating from a Wanderer-class planet identified as Talon 4. A scout reconnaissance was immediately dispatched to the center of the spike. The landmass at the heading mark 400802 returning with planetary samples and atmospheric imaging. Analysis shows the energy source to be an unstable radioactive material of enormous potential. We are unable to form an accurate risk assessment at this time, but we are unlikely to find an energy source this powerful again. Analysis will continue, but currently Talon 4 appears to be a viable secondary headquarters. Wow, 50% already? And that unlocks an art gallery on the title screen, which is actually kind of cool that you can get that within, uh, what, two hours and three minutes. I love that. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's bits of lore all over the place, just like describing stuff. And obviously, activate this. And uh, we got some slots to activate. This is a very slow and ominous room as well, because it's just like the hum of machinery and, and kind of wind outside. 
and then, and then the echoes of these like piston objects and a bit of platforming. We're gonna do a bit of like, you know, I, I guess this is the other thing I really love about this game. And, and a lot of my favorite video games end up being ones that perfectly know how to pace. Like, you're going through some fighting, you're doing some platforming, you're doing some puzzle solving. This is just a bit of everything. And even though the puzzles are just like, hit the switches and kind of activate the spinners. It's like you feel like you're really putting in a bit of work to just like make this happen. And it's not just like, oh, okay, like, I now go to the top of the room and I'm just fighting more enemies. It's like they've, they figured out how to make Metroid, like, have that variety. Because that's what I feel, like, Metroid never really had puzzles, at least not really with Super Metroid. It's mostly just, like, adventure exploration, which is fine, but, you know, sometimes, for some people, that puzzle aspect really tickles your fancy, and I feel like the mix of it really sells it to me. And this turns on this wonderful observatory, which is actually the name of the room. By the way, uh, one thing I also love about the game is that every time you go to the map screen and you get the name of the room on the top, and it really cements. Like, this is what I love, and uh, I think I've, I've maybe mentioned this. Like, if you read up, it's like, oh, where's the observatory? Your brain immediately goes, you don't even have to look at this room. You don't, oh, sorry, you don't even have to look at a map to, and see the name of it. Your brain has already seen this room. And so when someone writes the observatory, you're like, ah, oh, you should try out the game called Tomb Raider. If you're like, oh, I've heard of that game. I hear it's pretty okay. So there's a lot of fun, like, little planets around here. Uh, Mineralis, a sentient gaseous global exterminator virus. Oh, that's fun. There's some fun other planets here. Twin Tabula, planets best known for twin fever. Cool. Dormine 2. I have a little wasteland savage by nuclear dust storms. It's just like every planet sucks, except this is Zebes. Zebes is just chilling here. Planets crosses primarily Earthic ore, making it ideal for subterranean construction. A class 19 planet, Zebes is an, uh, inhospitable to most bioforms. The world was considered unremarkable until it became a base for space pirate forces. And then uh, if you keep an eye out, just over here. Nope, it's Twin Tabula again. This one, circling around. In the same solar system is Talon 4, which is kind of fun how it all links together like that. It, <coughs> oh. Ecosystem studies indicate that Talon 4 was a biological paradise prior to the impact of an extraterrestrial object. What remains of the biosphere is slowly fading due to exposure to phase on radiation. At current rate of decay, Talon 4 will be barren, a barren class 13 wasteland in approximately 25 years, which is a bit sad. Now, obviously, after activating all this stuff, you just gotta work your way up the room, which uh, now you've got some platforms that stick out, which make some of these jumps a bit more possible. So move, move your way up, and obviously we just go into this room, which has a save, and some little text on the back. Seems they're sending alerts about uh, their hollow projector system is obsolete. Earth is 6 million teratons, by the way. So these planets are not that big. I mean, granted, the gravity is kind of crazy. Samus is able to jump real, real high. And that's without even... Well, I guess she's got space jump boots now, so... Anyway, look at this wonderful item chilling over here. This is probably, maybe, the most controversial item in all of Metro Prime. This one's controversial to me, at least. Uh, this is the Super Missile, which is, instead of just being another missile type, it's actually a thing that uses five missiles in one go. You'll actually see me use it a fair bit, but it's kind of cool because you charge it down and then you have to awkwardly hit Y, which is not fun on an Xbox controller. But it fires a super strong missile. So it's actually a really great item. Again, if some people sleep on using the missiles in like regular gameplay, they're really messing out if they don't use the super missile as often as maybe they could. So there we go. Into the control tower we go. Now this is one thing I love as well, like just continuing to navigate through the space pirate base, which they've just kind of quickly built up here. And you get this wonderful, like, kind of skirmish up on the top here. It's a very iconic area at the, the top of the control tower. You've got all these, like, space pirates chilling here. 
because these are these are the guys fixing the hollow deck, I think. Or oh, the hollow ramp? I don't know, they're doing something. They fight a couple of dudes and uh, they send in the uh, the cavalry. <laughs> Introduce the flying space pirates. You can stand them, maybe, if they come down. Check out this guy, his green is still going while it's pause. Uh, pirates trained and equipped for airborne assault. Flying pirates are extremely agile in the air, but the heat signatures of the jetpacks can be tracked with thermal imaging. While their missiles are extremely potent, the jetpacks can be even more so. If the pack fails, we'll make a suicide strike. That is something to note. You can just blow them up, but enough- oh my gosh. Enough, uh, hits with the- the wave beam, and they're gonna do- well, I think I did. But, uh, yeah, hit them enough with the, the wave beam. Come on, go up, do the cool thing. Hey, okay, no, I was just gonna fall over and keel over and die. Okay. We gotta have some more show up. I want him to do the cool thing. This is what I, I love about the jetpack guys. There you go. <laughs> they start diving towards you and they'll try and blow up at some point. Whoop. Nice, fun. This is where I'd always lose so much health trying to like do this normally, but you can just use a super missile. A super missile works really nicely against them. So, as long as you're managing your missiles pretty decently, it's all fine. Uh, just make sure you look at the map and know where you are, and you can also just pick this up and probably get more missiles. Where they came from, right from the source. A little thing to scan. There we go, down we go. Going this way. There we go. And this room finally introduces the name of the game, the whole point of, I guess, why this game exists. There's Metroids. Wouldn't you know? We're so close to Z's. You think, oh no, they took a Metroid with them. Of course they are, Samus. You think they're gonna do base only on one planet? Because they almost did. You can scan this guy, and yes, this is indeed the Metroid, an energy-based parasitic predator. The dominant species of the planet SR388. Metroids can suck the life force out of living things. A Metroid will latch onto its prey and drain energy. I know, right? Actually, there's no Metroids in Metroid Prime Hunters. Unless you're playing the, the, uh, the first hunt wrong, but that doesn't count. Uh, Growing larger as it does, the only way to shake an attached Metroid is to enter Morph Ball mode and lay a bomb. And yes, you do have to fight them like normal. Also, I accidentally treat them. Oops. Now, they do this weird thing where you're going to see them do this one bit, where they kind of like, kind of static out and they grow a little larger and then they die immediately. Also, I love this. Ready? <laughs> I, every time I play this game, I always watch out for this one guy who just jumps through the window. Absolutely amazing move. Hold on, I gotta read more. <laughs> Initial transfer of Metro as the Talon 4 research facilities have been completed. Three were terminated in an incident at the landing site, but the others were pacified and transported safely. Initial phase on infusion testing is underway. We are eager to observe the effects of phase on Metroids, especially their ability to absorb and process the energy given off by phase on sources. Early research suggests a considerable growth in power and size. Whether the creatures stay stable thereafter remains to be seen. Yeah, they kind of blow up immediately after <laughs> you kind of hit them. Also, uh, whoops. Tank contaminated, I guess. Yeah, so I'm using the the phase on to make them big and at three degrees. This also actually kind of shows off designs of perhaps later Metroids that we'll see in this game. But they are thinking about it. Uh, so Space Pirate Encrypted Data. The reconstruction of Geoform 187, codenamed Ridley, was recently completed. After his defeat on Zeebs, Command ordered a number of metagenetic improvements for him. Though aggressive, we were able to implement these changes in the cycle. The metamorphosis was painful, but quite successful in the end. Early tests indicate a drastic increase in strength, mobility, and offensive capability. Cybernetic modules and armor plating have been added as well. We believe our creation, now called Meta Ridley, will become the mainstay of our security force, a job he will certainly relish. Yeah, the good old phase on pirates as well. I don't think these are quite the phase on pirates yet. Did they just sneak up behind me? I think he's still chilling down here. So I'm just gonna like run up this like there it is. I think he's 
we're good. <laughs> Phantom of Metroid attack propel creature with missiles. How fun. So yeah, you can you can also use the missiles to stop them. Also, ice containment. Have that. Okay, a bit more confidence is higher regarding Phase 1 applications. We know enough about Phase 1 now to begin combining it with Space Pirate DNA. The code name for this venture will be Project Helix. Preliminary studies indicate that Phase 1 infusion could produce radical new pirate genomes. Benevolent mutation levels are high in current test subjects. Phase 1 madness is a concern, but refinements in the infusion process should reduce or neutralize the odds of mental degeneration. Which is like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. mental degeneration. Just, it's a normal thing. Just, Good old missile combo. Oh, this guy's gonna be a massive pain if I go down there. There's another one all the way over here somewhere. He's just chilling back there. That was not what I wanted to do there. Get a missile. Yeah! So, here's a fun little thing up here. This is actually probably one of the meanest ones because you gotta get over this like one little ramp. So you're kind of pushing yourself to go a little fast. And then it's so narrow and the camera's kind of moving away from you, but just kind of nudge it a little bit, you'll get there. It's not a missile. It's been a while since I picked up a missile. Oops. Everyone is aggressive. This is just the same pictures of a... Uh, yeah, I, I was just thinking, like, I could probably, like push out this game in two kind of more two and a half hour length streams I'm thinking it might be a little longer than two and a half hours but I'm just thinking yeah we'll do two streams I could probably do this we'll see uh, so studies of Metroid biology continue though with limited progress it seems uh, likely that we will be much more successful using the Metroids for our means rather than trying to reproduce their powers if they could be adequately tamed we would have no need of a proper understanding of their metabolism a small force of disciplined Metroids could wipe out entire armies and once we find a way to shield them from cold containment weapons they will be invincible furthermore if we could uh, then harvest the energy they consumed we would have near limitless source of power at our disposal <laughs> more power there we go. Uh, Metroid Dissection continues to provide more questions than answers. Our research teams have isolated the energy conduits that run from the invasive twin mandibles to the energy core in the creature's quad quadripartite nucleus, but the manner in which a Metroid actually extracts a life force from its prey remains an utter mystery. The victim does not lose blood or any other vital fluids, and yet the Metroid extracts energy. Identifying this energy is our central problem. It takes no physical form, and yet without it, the victim dies. We will continue to research this matter, as the isolation of this life-giving essence could be the key to our ascendance. This is kind of fun as well, because it's just like, how do Metroids work? Uh, literally no one knows. Which is kind of fun, it adds to the mystery and makes them very special. This is a, uh, energy tank. It's just sitting there, but, uh, yeah, okay. It, it's just sitting there, just... <laughs> also, don't, don't, don't break this guy out, whatever you do. down the hole. Look at these guys. These are, oops. These are regular old beetles, but they're ice beetles. Burrowing insects with an ice reinforcer. There's that word again. True, they were created, but yeah, true. Uh, averse to heat. This member of the beetle family is adapted to life in the zero, in the sub-zero temperatures in the Fendrana Drifts, growing a thick ice shell over its entire body. The ice is extremely resilient, providing the ice beetle with extra protection and augmented digging abilities. He digs. He definitely moves fast. I'm going to just ignore him. Or just blow them up, that works too. Hi, yes. Hi. Wow, this room really loves taking its time to load, doesn't it? Now this room, you gotta kinda work your way around and uh... They talk about thermal imaging, but in particular, there are three force fields around this thermal imaging. And they are also firing missiles in the air. Or in, indoors, they are not being safe. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at landing in the right spots. Oh, that guy is. So, okay. Uh, little, little Metroids in the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Uh, so I believe there's another force field switch down here. They really love their thermal imaging. 
It's almost done. go. Ouch. There you go. Take out the central tank and voila! The visor has been shown. Uh, they are really looking forward to finding heat traces through the thermal visor. The interfaces will be sent to the quarantine area. It will be very useful. So, yeah, so this is the other super, 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 super cool part about this game and this is one thing that I absolutely love is that not only are the beam weapons your different tools of choice but you also get these different visors now there's not really too many visors in all of these games but what they lack in the number of visors I guess the utility is super cool so turn on the thermal visor and suddenly everything is purple except things start turning a bit more yellow when they're hot so even though it's like pitch black and you can't even lock on because these are actually shadow pirates by the way um, you can lock on because they're not invisible to heat. They still have heat, so that's what I love. And on top of that, just the UI is just a little different. Yeah, this guy's been an absolute pain, apparently. But I love that, like, you know, suddenly going back up through this room, you have a very different perspective as to how everything works. And also, all these Metroids start breaking out of captivity, which is great fun. Yeah, when they're doing that thing, they're just invincible. It's very bizarre as well. But like, yeah, oh, I love the devices. The devices are so cool. And also, as well, like, you're picking up on what? Radio static? In the background? So, the key thing to catch up on is that the thermal visor will kind of point towards energy conduits. And also, you got this is everyone's favorite enemy in the game this guy, the sentry drone, a well armed and armored uh, security mecha. Sentry drones have limited intelligence, but do their assigned tasks well. Being machines, they are susceptible to electrical attacks. When loaded drones initiate a security lockdown, then attempt to neutralize the intruder. The electronic warfare suit can scramble visor technology as well. So, you can't see him in the dark, and you can barely see him because he also scrambles, and there's also two of them, and they're just like shooting crazy at you. They're not the most fun. They're actually like the most painful enemies in the whole game. And uh, shout out to uh, when we get to the phase on mines later. And it's still dark in this room. Wow. So yeah, you just gotta go through all these rooms with this all thermal visibility basically and it's just kind of good fun to just be like hey you know like yeah like you are backtracking but the game knows that this time as opposed to the last time and i love how it's like you can also just spot these guys kind of spot. Yeah, he's, he's chilling up oh he fell he fell <laughs> he's stuck in the computer i also love how you can't see the uh like there is the elevated thing, but oh, there you go. You can see the, the hologram. There. Just keep your charge beam on hold while you got your music. Hi there. We're gonna have one more jump out through him for me. Oh, that's just a camera. <laughs> this is a sentry turret, which you can barely see because, again, Entry turrets don't make heat. And I love that, like, there's this just difference in how enemies look and act while in these completely dark scenarios and you're using your thermal camera. Your thermal visor, it's so cool. And then suddenly it's like, oh, it's actually, like, bright. But it's still cold, so it's actually not, like, the worst visor to use. There's still utility, even when it's not pitch black. So we don't need to really deal with these guys, just, just keep walking. Power beam actually gives you a bit of. Oh, but it does give you a little bit more light, but it's not enough light. And also, kind of annoying when you do go to switch your, your beams a bit. There we 
Egal. Seeing as Metro Prime was a huge difference from previous Metro games, and I think Nintendo games in general, it really stands out in introducing a few gimmicks rarely seen in the FPS at that point. Exactly, and I, I feel like Nintendo, like, bizarrely, has some success with, like, British studios picking up their existing IPs. Like, same thing with, um, uh, Rare picking up Donkey Kong. And then, also, while we're at it, this studio picking up Donkey Kong. Um, but it's kind of good fun of, like, Nintendo trusting some other devs and some, some non-Japanese studios to really, like, make these franchises work. Um, and yeah, exactly, like, like, and, and especially making a 3D game and having, like, this is the power of first person, is not seeing what is around you. And yet, it's like, look at this, I can, I can stand here and I can see four different space pirates like on screen <laughs> right now all just lying in wait and then I turn on this and I can't see any of them that's that's the power that is the power of just like this visor kind of system and it's something that I'm glad all three games kind of went with although uh I have <laughs> listen I love Metroid Prime 1 I think Prime 2 is a definitely a great sequel and I have huge reservations about Prime 2 I don't hate Prime 3, I just have huge reservations. I probably got old videos of me actually like not enjoying it. I think I overhyped myself when it came out. That was probably my biggest issue. There we go. Whoop, hi there. How you doing? Uh so I'm pretty sure yeah, hold on, wait. Back up. Is it down here or is it? It is in this one. Oh, I swear there was a missile in here, wasn't it? I'm hearing a missile. It's probably above. I think one of the reasons uh, uh, later 3D Metroids weren't as successful. Yeah. I think it's just like a, a degree of like... It is just this one. Hold on, what is this made of? Cordite. Oh, Cordite, as in... Hold on, wait. Look at the... Cordite, as in Super Missile. There you go. Look, we finally did it. We found the Cordite. <laughs> and yeah, that's right. It's like, okay, now you gotta find... Remember where you use Cordite and... Uh, Super Missile that up. It's uh... This one does not have that many mechanics, but all use uh, a lot, and while they're very specific in their purposes, the ways you can use them is very... Yeah, like, obviously it's like, here is an enemy who responds to your charge and screws up your visor. Like, yeah, it's a bit particular. I love how you could still be looking at this room without the, um, the thermal visor as well. Because it's like, now you really realize that, like, yeah, you can't lock onto these guys forever. You're gonna see them, like, dashing around, you can't actually hit them all the time. Sometimes can, without even locking on. I just, I just came completely back into the floor, man. I'm just gonna leave, man. I'm just gonna leave. They got nothing there for me, but... Uh, was it you I ranted about the first special item you get in Darksiders? I think he did. I think he, I remember you talking about Darksiders. And that is a game that I do need to, like, definitely play. I will say... As of 1 p.m. Uh, of my lunch break, I finally 100% at the Gran Turismo 4 Retro Achievement set, which I really appreciate that guy's set for really making you like not only just beat the game, but also get some get some points, get some do some challenge, push yourself a bit, and I really appreciate that. It's a, it was a really good set. Um, I thought the car challenges, by the way. Uh, you basically need to go through this area to get Super Missile, so you can blow that up. And then, you gotta switch to this and use the Wave Beam and the Thermal Visor to power it. It's a kinda out of the way thing, but it's like, hey, you know, does the job. And we got this wonderful, I love this like little snowy corridor. And 
then you gotta dodge the, the pulse bombers. In the best way I can. And now uh, this is what- oh my gosh, it's lagging the heck out. This is what I love, is that, like, we had all those earlier unimportant logs already give away what this boss was. And I love how, like, me kind of going through this, I'm like, oh yeah, there's all this, like, just pirate- pirate log just about, like, a you know, the testing phase on on rocks. Also, yeah, the testing phase on on rocks, man. They didn't have any ideas. I love this boss, he's cool. And also, on top of that, if you read the logs, you know exactly what his weakness is. But this guy, this guy is like, you know, a proper, like, midway boss. And he's screaming, but he's rocks. So, meet uh, everyone's favorite boss. This is uh, Thardis, an animated, sentient creature of stone charged with phase on radiation. Phase on radiation given off by Thardis negates auto targeting system, preventing lock on. It may be possible to acquire alternate targets with a different visor. The chaotic nature of phase on radiation leads to instability in its structural integrity. Thardis can encase targets in ice, and its colossal size and strength make it a formidable opponent. It red rock exactly. So, with the thermal visor, you can actually spot that there is a very red rock right here. This is where the heat is, and also watch out because once the rock explodes, suddenly the thermal visor is too hot. There's too much radiation, so you gotta go back to just normal vision. Shoot the rock enough, and uh, he then turns into Lolly Poly Bowl, where he will pretty much just wreck you, anyways. I tried my best. Anyways, rolling around, you might be able to get some pot shots on the thing. I'm sure you can use this, but he kind of moves around a lot. And he's got stuff blocking the shots, so I feel like the way it kind of is the better beam to use, just because it gets, it gets thrown a bit easier. But he does take his sweet time, I'll tell you that. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, what, six or seven, like, rock segments you got to take out. He does, he does take his sweet time. Or I could just be using this instead of one. So now, let's, let's uh, try and dodge him more appropriately. I guess he's just kind of go around him a bit. Also, one thing, and this is super subtle, but I love how the game does this. Anytime you're fighting a boss, and you go out of Morphle, Samus is always facing the boss. It's, it's just such a minor thing that you'd like never pick up on unless you're like actually going yeah so this is not like she doesn't get up the way the camera's oh i i was frozen today she doesn't get up the way the camera's facing also he's rolling again she gets up towards the boss which makes so much sense in the in especially fights like this because it's like it's very easy to lose where the boss is you know, when, you're, when you're not looking at that oh, i'm frozen today again oh my gosh she's rolling again He really loves rolling, doesn't he? Worst part about rolling, you can't lock onto the rock. There you go. Get him, missiles. They are not really getting them. Sometimes they get them. That's rock. He's gonna roll up into a ball again, isn't he? Oh wait, no, he's causing lightning. Ah yes, he makes the, the second phase of the fight a bit more interesting. Lightning, of course. But, uh, in particular, he's created the most ridiculous fog you've ever seen in your life. Which doesn't mean anything when you're using the thermal visor. Yeah, no, this guy, this guy means serious business for how much damage he takes. And then obviously, yeah, there is no red electric, there is no red electric, exactly. But like, when you think about it, like, thunder comes from rain clouds, which means it's actually the water guy's job to, to do that. It's like how, um, like, uh, was it like, earth, fire, water, wind? 
like those of you have four elements, and it's like, yeah, what's electricity? Actually, in like Avatar, it's electricity done by the five enemies. That doesn't really make any sense. There's a big rock on the top. Yeah. What do the Earthbenders get as like the special kind of like secondary? Oh, they do metal. They do metal. Yeah. So what do the Earthbenders get? Hey. We're dead. Anyway, we're knocking off the big rocks off the top. You could probably actually hit this one. It's a solid shot. Oops. Sounds <laughs> like, ooh, new face. I got the sub elements actually show that they completely misunderstand. Oh, exactly. That's the fun of the show, though. And I, oh, you can't hit the other rock. Oh, too much radiation. Oh, I just keep hitting the other rocks. <laughs> I was frozen today yet again. If you look at it, they are vendors of the four states of matter, gas, liquid, solid, and plasma. And that makes sense, actually. <laughs> oh, that, that reminds me of, like, go to Wikipedia for, like, like any of those, gas, liquid, solid, plasma, and then see the description down the hall, or, like, the, the category of, like, states, and there's so many, like, bizarre states that, like, have been invented. So anyway, he hates the fog. He hates it just as much as I do. He sucks in the fog. And now we're back on even terms yet again. Oh, this guy does, he does take his sweet time. You can definitely see I'm hitting his health a little bit, but at least I've got five energy packs. I will say that, like, when you know where the energy tanks are, you can be a lot more liberal in how you're, like, handling the boss fights in this game. I'm pretty sure this is it as well. This is the central core of the Which means, let's get it with a good old super missile. Just for funsies. Oh. I like a good old super missile. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get it with another one. Just for fun. There we go. And uh, Thardis is uh, so naked out after being hit with, like, actually hundreds of electric shots that he uh, falls over. He didn't like that. And then he throws a rock at you, like, why not? You know? Perfect time to end the stream. Oh, actually... <laughs> yeah... Yeah, might as well. I, I was thinking, it's like, eh. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm just thinking, like, the next one is kind of, like, awkwardly far away. But I think, yeah, I think you're right. Now's a, a good time. So anyway, yeah, you get the spider ball. You can now go up walls. You also get uh, Samus with a really cool design for the morph ball. Uh, the important thing to note is, uh, actually, you want to just go... This way, you want to literally come back where you came. I definitely have one last item I want to pick up. And I feel like that'll be good, because the rest of the game, like, is going to involve, like, a little bit of kind of backtracking. So I feel like it'd be good to, to just, like, get this. Oh my gosh, these guys. Everyone's favorite enemies. Except now you can actually see them. Because it's not pitch black. Because you can't see them in film film mode. They're just... Not that visible. I am enjoying myself. I love this game so much. I swear. Okay, these guys are showing as well. I don't even have to say it. I don't even have to deal with them. This is another save room. Fairly, fairly close. But uh, now we just get to bail, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, another point in the game where it's like, okay, you... Oh, yeah, there's a big sheep off now. Who, <laughs> very awkwardly, you didn't fight with the, uh, with the wave beam. And now you realize, oh, the wave beam's kind of pointless, isn't it? <laughs> you can't do anything against them. So, uh, but yeah, this is another point in the game where it's like, oh, okay, you get, like, all these items. And you get the spider ball, and now your brain has to go, where did I see spider ball tracks? And, uh... Harken your brain back to, wow, that was a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah. 
So here we go. Back up, out of Fendrana Drifts. This was a good fun, like, exploration though. And there's still, like, a bit, kind of, on the back end of the Fendrana Drifts. It's not too many rooms, but it's definitely, like, just a little teeny, teeny little bit left. But yeah, I was just thinking, like, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a trek. But the treks in this game, like, where you, where you gotta go from one place to another, it's not actually that bad. Um, really, I think the worst is me stopping and reading out logs, you know, out loud, basically. That's probably the, the slowest part of the whole stream. Which, fortunately, we've gone through a lot of the, the entries, so... Um, you're actually able to... A little bit of a mild spoiler, you're able to get one of the artifacts, like, right now. But... You're not able to get what's underneath the artifact right now, so... I will... I am skipping that for now. I have a... I have a proper strat with where I go in this game. Partially inspired by those Game Facts guides, but not exactly the Game Facts guide. So... If you actually want the Blendo strat for what items do I pick up, just follow along. Actually, the worst part, I draw this out by actually having lines on a map. Um, this is me being lazy, by the way. You're supposed to come back here, you can clearly see the graphic big point there, but I'm like, eh, I don't want to warp or get to that hole. It's just, it's just like, eh, just take the hits. I, I do go through here, though, because this is kind of a pain if you don't. <laughs> this is the kind of thing, trying to jump through the lava. There we go. Up and at him. But yeah, no, I'm still gushing about this game. Sequence breaking? No, there's no sequence breaking. This is a this is a completely unsequence broken run. It's just like there's I feel like there's a very, like, clean path to beating this game. Um, because you do have to get pretty much all the required items in order. I think the only thing you can get slightly out of order is the charge beam, because you only need it to get into the Fendrana Drifts. So you can technically get it after with the barrier suit, but it's like, you might as well just get it as soon as you can. It's there, you gotta, you gotta get it before you get to the Magwell Caverns. But yeah, everything else is like, yeah, after you get the spider ball, the game's already checked, technically, that you picked up the, uh, you know, the super missile, and the thermal visor, and the, um, and the, uh, wave beam. So really, I haven't been able to skip anything in order to get this, and now it's like, okay, now I've got all these other items. Where do I go? What door did I just hit, by the way? What? What? The game just prompted me. You can't open the door with that weapon. I've been using... You only get that prompt if it's like any of the other two beam weapons or it's a missile door. Maybe it was a missile door I hit? There is a plasma door, like, earlier in that section, so... Um, anyway, so this is kind of the fun thing, is that now we're returning back all the way to the Chozo Ruins, and yeah, this is... <laughs> you're probably going, oh yeah, there was a spider ball track in one room, and there was, but... A little bit more than just that as well. So, fortunately, we chose our ruins as the last place I'll be observing in this uh, stream. But, uh, yeah, there's a. Hold on, if you scan there, check this out. It's just weakened due to cellular decomposition. So if you... Okay, apparently a regular missile is off limits. I love how there's a, actually a big beetle there as well. Like, no little one. But yeah, hit that with a double super missile and uh, the hole, but unfortunately it's not a very convenient hole to get into, so instead I'm gonna do this, and hopefully this guy doesn't ruin my day. Oh. oh no! I love how he and then he disappeared immediately. I love how he dies on us in, like, a boost ball hit, by the way. <laughs> like, the boost ball does damage. It's amazing. So, but yeah, there was a missile expansion up there. And I'm just going to work my way around to pick up that other one that I saw. But yeah, like, I love just this idea of returning to the older areas with it. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, you don't actually have to go that long way. There's actually this wonderful ledge here, which is high enough to just space jump back over. So, aha, I thought of everything. And a casual jump, and there's a missile in this tree the whole time. 
75 is like we're, we're still a bit shy of like a third of all the missiles just a little shy there we go uh, i'm gonna boost through here because these guys get in the way if you're not boosting but i, I love the look of the spider ball it's it's so amazing looking uh now that we've also cleared up all the uh all the stuff you can actually hop into here which will shoot you up towards the ceiling and then hopefully I, okay he hates water apparently uh, you can use the spider ball so holding down r on the track just like before go through here drop down and there's another missile Not very cool of them uh, also this reminds me one you can stand in here and two I get okay. I know. I know you need to scan the spider ball track. I haven't actually. No, that's Metro Prime Two. I keep forgetting. Spider ball track is not a scannable thing in this game. I keep forgetting. Um, let's just cross this room, which actually is nothing now that you clear the water and you can just double jump as well. That's what I love. You just get like. The ability to just like cut through all these things it's not necessarily sequence breaking but it's just like hey i have the ability to just double jump i have the ability to like you know walk through this water which is more because i cleared out the water like that's what i love is you know making the world your own i love like this like weird little cut that i always do i don't know the <laughs> shriek beds don't trigger but uh, it's supposed to trigger when you're on the other side of the room there there we go, got all these missiles that I will pick up and then casually go, hey check this out, this is me falling off the ledge because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Excellent, just tap back. It happens, it happens, you know, you know how it goes. Okay. So I forget, is this, I think this is actually just, yeah that's just bombable, that's not even like anything too fancy. But you need the space jump to get up here, and, uh, yeah, I just never walked in this direction since. Think about it, I don't think I've gone here since I got the barrier suit. So. Now, with a bit of, a bit of pizzazz, finally, you may be wondering, what is all the way over here? And that is, now that we've cleared the water, actually like well actually you can do this without clearing the water but you hit a pretty quick dead end There's a lot of shriek bats but uh yeah you remember this little toad thing he eats small things like you but you've got the bomb and you just blow him off from the inside and he's uh very dead so uh but yeah there's some little generators here so using the morph ball bomb your way up into these uh little terminals which will power themselves by, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure the Chozo were cheating and using those geothermal generators as well. Anyway, hop down, see if you can rush over, oops, see if you can rush over and hop into the next slot. And this activates uh, a handful of platforms, which uh, are a lot harder to get to when you don't have the, the, the space jump boots. When you do, you can kind of, you know, just head up into them, you don't have to actually do the platforming. But the switch isn't active until you hit the other switches in order, so get up into this one slot, and you have activated all three terminals. And that opens this door as well as activates the platform, so. So yeah, that's always been available, but again, it's just like doing things in an order that I feel like optimizes, like, what you're looking at. I guess. So go through here. And you're greeted with two things. Now, if you didn't have the spider ball. Hold on, like, le legit, what does this say? Eh, this is a spider ball track. The magnetic rail system track in Morphal mode. Press and hold R. When close to this type of surface, use the stick. Move the ball along the track. When you start to disengage from the surface, caution! A morphal bomb will briefly disengage the ball from track. Yes, you can bomb yourself off the track. So, if you go down this lower route, which you'll just... You're, you're able to do this anyways, like, immediately after you pretty much get the morphal bombs. There's an energy tank here. But it's... I don't know, it's kind of out of the way. 
And hey, I haven't died yet. I haven't needed it yet. So that's my famous last words. And honestly, there's going to be a time when that happens. But I know there's like one thing and I really want to like sequence break cut it. But it's much later. It's next stream. Don't worry. Now this is kind of neat. You got to go quick because these boxes just fade out. And uh, with that, you've now entered this funnel. Dynamo room? Is that the, the name of the room? I think it's the blast furnace, actually. Uh, but yeah, there's a white door. Ooh. What could possibly be next? Uh, so what is this otherworldly pestilence that infests the land, seeking out life and its blind need for corruption? And where did the media that brought it originate? Was it crafted by alien hands? Or is it a roving chunk of a planet that has suffered a violent end? Our minds quail in horror at the thought that long ago, in some corner of the universe, as yet unseen by our eyes, an entire planet was perhaps once coated with this great poison. Whatever cataclysm may have ruptured, that doomed place must have been mighty indeed. And if other medias from it spread through space, bearing this evil to the far corners of the universe, we hold fast to the hope that this is not so, that the only surviving remnants of this evil are here on Talon 4, then at least there is hope for its eradication. Yeah, okay, we hope so. Uh, also, while I'm at it, let's just quickly scan. Uh, there's this whole bit up here which I'm not going to get into right now, but there are these plated parasites. Hardy members of the parasite family, invulnerable to most weaponry, a cousin to the parasite. These creatures are known for their amazing resilience. Field studies suggest a weakness to more full delivered weapon systems. Not very fun. And we got these fun little bits here, like, even though you don't have the ability to go through those white doors, there's still more doors to go through. And a lot of fun little jumping corridors to get through. You're gonna love the number of corridor doors in, like, all of these games, really. Uh, but yeah, this is a fun little room. I'm pretty sure you've got, like, what? Hey, you got, like, just three little doors on the wall up here. Uh, okay, to the entrusted one, if you read these words, then our hope has not been in vain. Your path is fraught with danger. Monstrosities beyond description lurk in the shadows, starving, hunting for prey, searching for ways to quench the poisonous surges that bloom in their brains. Some of these are shrewd, but they are blinded by their evil designs. Believing in the black promise of the great poison, they seek to harness it for their own ends. It is these last that are the greatest danger, perhaps an ever greater one than the great poison itself. When you rid the universe of these creatures, you will be the true entrusted one. None know if our temple, the cradle, will prove powerful enough to contain this evil forever. For now it wraps around that abomination, cutting it off from the world above. But how can we Chozo hope for the cradle to remain intact when that which it guards rides in the darkness, growing always stronger? The fate of this world rests with the gathering of artifacts we call the Cypher. But even it is not all powerful. It is strong, yes, an enchanted hole made of twelve links. Still, it is finite in its reach, and we who guard it are slowly succumbing. Will the entrusted one arrive before our vigilance crumbles away? That time rapidly approaches. Oh my gosh, jeez. Many Chozo are gifted with a distant sight, and even more begin to learn it as our harmonization with the universe becomes more and more complete. We peer forward, seeing prophecy in the ripples of the water, hearing rumors of coming days on the breath of the wind. That was almost a Zelda title. Though we celebrate the distant sight, many of these visions are dark, and the worst of the prophecies, and the most common tells of the coming of the worm. Born from parasites, nurtured in a poison womb, the worm grows, devouring from within until the world begins to rot. Not all prophecies come to pass, of course, but we cannot help but fear this dark portent. Very, very ominous. Uh, so, I think actually... Can I make this jump? I always wonder if I can make this. It's, it's just a bit too far away. Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm nudging against the wall. There we go. So, this is, I believe, a cordite thing on the wall here. There you go. And then just scan it afterwards. Something behind the wall seems to have been activated. That's right. Oh, we got a fun little Morpho puzzle. Again, it's just like you can... You could just walk into the next room, but... There's a lot of these fun little puzzles that are always kind of available, even on the first time you go to some of these rooms. By the way, I haven't even mentioned the music. I know I've, like, kind of mentioned, like, a few, like, melodic themes here and there, but one thing I love is how incidental the music starts to feel, and then suddenly it's like, here's a percussive beat, or here's, like, an extra kind of, like, uh, you know, soundscape-y kind of harmonization. 
Oh. Ja. A little missile up here. How cool is that? And then I drop down and then I realize it's like, oh yeah, you gotta you gotta still work your way up here. But I, I love how the music really like, you know, has this brooding feeling. And if anything, it feels very Super Metroid y, like just on its own. Super Metroid has these very like toned down kinds of tracks. Look at this little sign here, this is only the holder of the twelve shall face the world. Ooh. Oh my gosh, really? We're just we're gonna do this? The great poison crops all even yeah, okay. They've spark notes the uh the, the lore in this game. Now, this is a super cool room, but oh no, we come across our greatest enemy. is a Chozo Ghost, a spectral entity, bioelectric field, invulnerable to natural natural energies. As these entities phase in and out of existence, the only way to track them accurately is with X-ray scanning. This partially phased nature makes them invulnerable to natural energy types such as fire, ice, and electricity. Their aggressive and erratic behavior is most likely due to the corrupting effects of the phase on in the Talon 4 environment. They appear to be drawn to Chozo religious sites, where they wreak havoc upon anything that dares enter the area. So these guys, they mean business, they just jump to places and then kind of, you know, be annoying. But uh, a super missile clears them out super quickly. Anyway, this guy's got his hands, hands out. You can actually give him a scan as well. It's a Chozo Elder. Yeah, Guardians. Their, their hands are indeed empty as if waiting and offering. And, uh... Too bad I got lore here. Things bound to earthly shapes are temporal and frail, existing in a single dimension. They're fragile, vulnerable, and ultimately mortal. However, not all things obey this law. Shapeless, they wait beyond the realm of perception, emerging only when one arrives who can feel their presence. Such as the will of the Chozo. Our will to defeat the evil seeping into this planet remains forever, desiring only to see the darkness meet its end. Mindless but strong, our will shall never sleep until the entrusted one arrives to cleanse his land. Uh, so you just jump in his hands and put his put your ball in his hands, <coughs> and then he goes yeet, <laughs> and I hope you're holding down uh, the the uh, spider ball button. Anyway, you hit this and it reveals not one, not two, but three things on the wall. I actually leave these for later because I'm pretty sure, like one of them, I think you need the. Th the second one in order to even do anything. Can we check this out? This is something that we haven't seen yet, and I think there's only even two in the game. This is a missile recharge station. It recharges your missiles. How cool is it? You can actually scan it as well. Missile station. There we go. Actually, I think you have to do the... I Actually, yeah, never mind. Never mind. I, I, think, I think my brain's going like, oh, you don't have to do any of these. I think you gotta do the... The charge beam. The charge beam one? The, this is how you know it's late at night. It's 11.27 p.m. This is what I get. I woke up at like 5 a.m. yesterday to watch the Bathurst. Anyway, a new path is open. So I'm just like, yeah, I've... Stayed up very late. This one's on me. You know, wave beam. So go through the tube and it drops you off off the top. And then he's like, yeah, no, you're done. You don't need it. You don't need this anymore. <laughs> and he unreveals these, but that's okay. Go across here, and uh, just as a little like nice thing to do. Safety shield on mine. Wait, there you go. Scan this, and the safety shield turns off, so you, you don't have to do that jump ever again. You can just jump up onto this ledge and walk through here, and we're almost at the goods right at the edge of everything. Scan this. The drain is shut off. It's not working. We must get into the water and drain the pool ourselves. And this sucks all the fish in. I, I love that. <laughs> all the fish have been sucked down the drain. Poor fishies. Um, this is also what I love. You, you gotta try do a, a uh, like a half pipe jump. You gotta avoid these stone toads, or not avoid them, so that's all cool. Uh, anyway, jump over to this side, 
and greet say greetings to yet another beam this is the ice beam there we go <laughs> so you press down to switch to the ice beam and just like the wave beam it is a separate beam to the other stuff and uh it's kind of cool this actually makes it well oh my gosh this is me saying cool with anything cold related uh but the ice beam it's sl it shoots the slowest but it does a lot of damage and also it complements shooting with the missiles if you freeze enemies so it's definitely very neat uh that is your tease this is <laughs> the stream's been bang on three hours right now so this is your tease for next week's stream but honestly is this halfway to the game this is, this is only 35% of the items but uh I mean the amount of actual like practical items to pick up that's that is half of them I feel that is actually half of them I think one two three four five six seven eight practical items and then we picked up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen okay I picked up more than two thirds of the practical items but uh but yeah, I, I love this game. I'm willing to do a three-hour stream just for this game. But with that, I would like to thank you so very, very, very much for, for watching. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I, I wanted to reward you on that one. And I love this game. I don't care. I'll, I'll play this game to anyone, for anyone, as long as I want. Except <laughs> maybe not another three hours, but I love it. So anyway, yeah, if you enjoyed or you missed bits, uh, the VOD will be up on YouTube whenever YouTube doesn't process a video for five hours after I upload it. I upload it immediately when I wake up, so it's uploaded by 8am, but it doesn't process until 12, it's really annoying. Um, but yeah, and yeah, if you wanna, if, if you at home are watching this as a VOD and you haven't subscribed or on YouTube or followed on Twitch, you can do that, or I just stream every week, and I'll be streaming this next week. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Stay safe, eat your greens, play this game. I love it. Find a way to play it. It's on the Wii U. You can still download it on the Wii U. Oh no, maybe you can't anymore. I think they've stopped that now, so. Well, yaha fiddledy dee, that's what they say, so. Good night, everyone. Have a good one.